So what do you think the true secret is for black people to attain wealth in the United States of America? Many people believe that it's just hard work, go to school, get a job, and you become wealthy. Some believe that it's a trick. Black people will be forever poor in this country. Well, tonight we want to talk about this. New study is not so new, but a study from Princeton that talks about wealth of two different nations, that nations being the black nation and the white nation inside the United States. So tonight, I didn't want to talk about this all by myself because y'all know I talk about black wealth, the black wealth race gap. But tonight I wanted to bring in some other fine gentlemen. So I wanted to bring in the gentleman who kind of gave me the idea, kind of, sort of, to start. And that was my man, Lawrence, over there, the financial griot. Why is this not working? Oh, we got something going on. And we got Jimmy going on. And we got a new surprise guest. So we got this parish also. So how's everybody tonight? Amazing as always, man. Thank you for having us. So before we get going real quick, Liz is new. She hasn't been on the show before, but mm-hmm. my secret plan is trying to get quite often. <laughs> Listen, I'm I still owe Jimmy a book, but don't worry, it's coming. Oh, Jim, Jimmy's doing a book? I'll see. That's something else I didn't get invited to, but okay. Yo, here you, here you go. No, see, no, no, no. You, you heard it all wrong. You heard it all wrong. No, no. I, owe Jimmy, I, I owe Jimmy a book. See? And, but, yes. but hold on, y'all. Houses. Hold on. So, but anyway, y'all, again, welcome to the Finance Rebel Show. Y'all know we do the Finance Rebel Show every Wednesday at 8-ish. Running a little bit time behind today. CPT. You know how that goes. But tonight, we're going to talk about the new black wealth formula. And so we wanted to talk about how to create wealth and how to create for wealth for black folks. But again, we have Liz Parrish. Paris. No, Paris, sorry. I'm sorry, you're making me nervous. <laughs> the beauty that's just coming off the screen. Let's see. Tell me you're from Philly without telling me you're from Philly. Come on. Come on. Listen, I, I, got, I, got a, I got to have some... I was about to say something. I ain't going to say it's it. Suave. It's okay. I'm going to let you have a suave, oh, but I ain't green to the agenda. Thank you for joining us today, Liz. Tell everybody what you do. Um, I'm a senior loan officer with Movement Mortgage. So Liz basically makes sure people get them bricks and them keys so they can get them homes. As best as possible. That's right. Lawrence, introduce yourself to everybody. Yo, 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 everybody. My name is Lawrence Delva Gonzalez. I am known on the interwebs as the neighborhood finance guy, where I basically teach people how to become wealthy in their lifetime. How I know it's possible because me and my wife was able to become millionaires wing, 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 in less than five, well, less than seven years, that's for sure. So we definitely locked it in and we were sharing an entire journey with other people so you could copy paste what you want, what you like. And ultimately, I love to talk about black wealth and how to really move our community forward. My man, my man. All right, and Jimmy, everybody knows you, but tell them who you are anyway. Yeah, um, I'm one half of the Finance Rebel Show. Um, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Listen, let's make that happen. At, at this let's point, make it at happen. This point, at this point, that's what it is, though. But no, I'm one half of uh, the Body Hood team. But um, I'm just here to have fun and talk with my melanated, uh, beautiful black genius folks. Still in your line tomorrow. Mm. Still in your line tomorrow. But um no, you know, um I talk about all things um Bitcoin, real estate valuation, and black wealth. All right, so Jimmy kind of teed it up really, really well. So Jimmy brought up Bitcoin. And so this year, Jimmy is going to the Black Blockchain Association Conference in DC this weekend. Now, last year, me and Jimmy, the whole Black Wealth Project went. I didn't get invited this year but before jimmy comments but before but before jimmy comments i I, I wanna i got i gotta show what happened last year just a little bit i'm gonna show me then i'm gonna show jimmy so do me a favor everybody in the chat make sure let put a one in the chat if you can hear me or hear us so the most simple smart contract is you sending bitcoin from one person to the other is not a human being that's validating and securing that transaction. It's an entire protocol of the blockchain, but it is also a script that generates this, this type of process. So when we talk about decentralized finance, people are just being creative with crypts. And I actually want to take a minute to answer a question before I answer, ask another question. 
Um, but I'm going to let you guys hear the next question so you can think about it. And so the next question is, you know, where do you see people actually teaching about decentralized financing and the designing of these new products? Um, or if you don't see it, what would you like to see? Like to see actually teach about so my apologies, everybody. I thought this was queued up perfectly. It's going a little bit longer than I expected. So in the interim, let's do this. And I changed my settings around, so I'm having some tech issues. So give me one second, and we'll get us all back on the screen properly, the way it's supposed to be, the way it usually is. All righty. So here we go. All righty. All right. So give me one second, everyone. I'll cue this up. And we only have about two minutes, so I'm going to be brief in my comments so that you guys. And it's can really hard question. to do this. But I think the gaming sector is going to be because very I didn't get a chance to um, pull out. Caleb already mentioned NFTs, but finance opportunities. I didn't get a chance to pull it out already playing to the T on YouTube. Games, but again, this is a recap of the Black Blockchain Summit so I think in 2022, really where Jimmy, myself, Courtney, Tracy, and Corey. All spoke, and then we had a chance to go to dinner afterwards. Yep. So, final question. Jimmy, where did we eat again? Um, a black restaurant, obviously. Uh, Georgia Browns is where we went last year. Well, you know, we try to walk our talk, so we always were eating and purchasing. And, and the reason I remember that is because I was just talking to Tracy, who's probably going to be down D.C. for um, Congressional Black Caucus, which is going on at the same time. Mm, of so course trying, she is. So we try, so we try to see if we can uh, get the Georgia Browns. Of course you are. Of course we are. I'm, I'm oh, going to miss y'all. I'll be down there Friday with uh, some of my alumni from Johns Hopkins, and then I got to okay. scoot right back up to Philly. But I'm with my black alumni on Friday. Do you hear that storyed institution that? right there? Yeah, she, she just did his little key dropping like it was nothing like. Jeez. Yeah, my little John Hopkins, like, you know. Listen, black alumni at Johns Hopkins. That, listen, okay. I love them. Go hey, to some movers and shakers, okay? That's what I'm talking about. All right, so we got some, we got some smart black folks. Cool. Kamari oh, gonna make God. sure we see the part where Kamari spoke too. Now we're gonna play the part. The entire time too. Jimmy. He's like, yes, he is. He's and, gonna make sure. He and could Jimmy. narrate it. He could just tell us what it was. He's like, no, <laughs> you gotta hear it. And there's a, there's a, the reason why I want to show this is because there's a story about this, right? Because Jimmy basically cuts me out for these comments. Y'all don't realize how Yo, much. That's torture. fake news. That is fake news. <laughs> I laughed at it, but I didn't cuss you out. Shut it up. He did. He did more than laugh, y'all. No, I just laughed. I thought it was funny. I thought it was. All funny. right, he didn't cuss me out. That, that's not true. But he, he it was kind of sharp though. But you live your rap. You're the finance rebel, so you live your rap. All right. So listen here. The woman asked me what was my thoughts. Excuse me. I shouldn't say the woman. The the young lady who actually runs the conference. Her name escapes me at the moment. It's actually a really, really well done conference, in my opinion. But she asked me what were my thoughts about blockchain. And so here they are. I see DeFi crypto being toured at Fatherhood University with the children, which I try to get involved with it as much as possible. And where I would like to see it go, um, I'm going to say this, this might be a little controversial. I actually would like us to see it take a step back from crypto and DeFi and get into overall finance and economics and just understand how money works mm. throughout. Because Bitcoin, DeFi, they're all tools. If we don't understand how to best leverage those tools and just fall into the, the salesmanship that everybody's selling to us, we wind up getting abused. And we, we've seen this happen in our communities time and time and time again. So we fall for the sales pitch, not knowing that this tool wasn't applicable to our situation. And by the way, everybody, this is before the FTX scandal, but I'll continue on. It's sad note. I just want to put some respect on her name. More. Oh, hold on. No, no. You won't get your turn. You won't get fair oh, time. No, no, no. I know you were still playing the rest. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Let's get oh, your yeah, yeah. I'm give you a fair time, brother. You know what I'm Financial literacy, but financial mastery. Right, because literacy is I mean, y'all got that financial mastery. That's that's what I'm pushing. That's what I'm always pushing. That or financial fluency. And that comes from my homegirl, Tony Moore. But that's what I said, y'all. And I didn't get invited back this year. First now, off. Now, Jimmy. No, no, no. Now, Jimmy has to tell you what he said. He said, 
Kamar is the only guy who go to a conference and slander the conference. All right, so so first off, the lady. So I've been traumatized for a whole year about this show. Respecting the lady's name, her name is Deidre McIntyre. Who Thank you, and she's job. a G. She's a very lovely lady. Yeah, she is. She, she does amazing job. So I'm gonna put some respect on her name. I just laughed when you said it. I did not cuss you out. I thought it was funny because you were just. I mean, you live your raps. You're the finance rebel. So any space you go into, you um, you're you're contrarian for all, you know for a lot of times. And <laughs> but I tell the truth. I, I know you're gonna argue it is not. I know you're gonna argue that it's not being contrarian. But I just thought it was funny. I, I thought it, I absolutely thought it was funny. And you know it was apropos though. And the the audience laughed at you, man. Huh? You laughed at you so no, much. You never got invited back. Like, like, and, and listen, like, you know. No, but you weren't you weren't wrong. I mean, a lot of us say that, right? So you know, the, you know, I say it all the time. I I get criticized within that space um, as as someone who works in that space when I tell people that ninety nine percent of uh, cryptocurrency is all scams. You know what I mean? It's like I I, I say it every all the time. So well, you know, wait a minute. I, what else do you say? I, I did that. <clears throat> I say 99% of cryptos are scams and 99.99% of NFTs are scams. Like mm-hmm. there's something yeah. else you say too. I need I need which, that. Which part I say a lot. I say a lot, man. All the all the all most of these crypto coins are what? Oh, they're trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist, right? So they're 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 out looking to solve something that they're not needed for. So um, he's he's not playing along. That's not what he says. And I got this wrong. I mean, what, what, the only thing that part? matters is Bitcoin. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Bitcoin. I'm a Bitcoin through and through. Oh yeah, I'll it's, say that too. it's the use of Bitcoin, and I and I think for the amount of time that I've, I'm I'm very still new in this space, and I think I've talked to Jimmy a little bit about certain things in regards to coins and investment. Things have to be useful, and most of the coins aren't really useful outside of everyone trying to use them as a get rich type of play. So I think but, Bitcoin is the only one that's been sustainable thus far, even with the drop in value. It's still, I mean, the little bit of Bitcoin I won from uh, by the hood. It's, it, it, it started off with one piece. And now, you know, I got a little fifty dollars in that thing. I'm just saying. No, but, just saying. but see, that's the thing, though, right? So, you know, I get criticized for saying that a lot, but mm-hmm. it's true because a lot of the things you're talking about are are, are people trying to solve problems that don't exist. And Don, um, you know, uh, listens because that's what I call them all. I said you got Bitcoin, and then you got, you know, I'm not going to put that in. Bitcoin. I'm not trying to make some conversation. Bigger honey, I see. I'm not going to make some conversation, bro. Bitcoins. Shit coins. Say it. Say it. Say it with your chest. Yeah, you got Bitcoin. You got shit. Like you know, so that's that's the way I look at the market. But but at the end of the day, though. I agree with Kamari, though. I think there is such, some something to be said about us jumping, you know, head first into wait, the wait, water. Wait, 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 this is a special moment. This All right, never mind. Lawrence is agreeing with me, y'all. Like, Can we agree? I like, think we agree all the time. <laughs> like, I literally do agree. I think we jumped right into it, especially in 2020 and 2021. And we felt that this was going to be our way of just kind of like upending the system. I think wealth has more to do than just these quick, you know, get with quick scenarios. Mm-hmm. We have to really change our habits or the way that we think about money, the way that we move with money, the way that we even buy products. So at the end of the day, I don't think any coin, you know, is going to solve a lot of the myriad of issues that we have in our own household and in our own selves. So you can well, try to get this say, Bitcoin, but you ain't going to do it. It's you just, again, yeah. I think we all agree. It's about education and understanding. And the biggest point about it is at the end of the day, these are just things you add into a, a solid system. And most of us don't have a solid financial system. We're kind of just piecing it together as we go. Cause no one else had it. Okay, um, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that I think that like those time periods you're talking about, Lawrence, so those, those were very unique in terms of what was happening because that goes to the lottery ticket mentality because it wasn't just crypto. People, you remember GameStop and Bed Bath? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. People yeah. Tried to and the, NFTs. Game. I'm like, well, it's a picture. It's, so it, it was one thing after the next, right? It was whether it was trucking and then NFTs and then like the stock market. I, it was it was one thing after the next repeatedly because, I mean, money was on the streets. That was just a unique time. Run the play. Run the play. What else? We had a very deregulated Fed, and they. What did you say? Come on, what else was it going on? Run the play, run the play. Oh yeah, they run the play culture, like Airbnb. I don't forget Airbnb. Turo, Turo Airbnb, Turo. Every, everything like a parking spot be for sale, my kids for sale. Like my Every, for everything sale. can be sold, and everything can be flipped, right? But that goes to the lottery ticket mentality. Um, but it, you know, education. Um, but also you have to really take a step back and figure out why do those things resonate within the culture, right? Why is it that people are willing to take those chances? And that's the the bigger conversation. Is it a culture thing? Because I'm also going to say there's also a, a 
capitalism thing that we have here in America where we turn everything into a profitable situation, which really yes, often yes. should not be. So I, I, I agree with the lottery ticket thing to a point, but I think culturally as a country, we push everything can be done for profit. Everything. Yeah, and that, well, that, that's American culture. That's capitalism. Yeah. Right. If you can't make a profit off of it, you shouldn't do it. And that's that's why everyone's so hungry, jumping for where's oh I see a life raft. Let me get it, even though it's deflated. Oh, I see another opportunity. Let me hop on that. And without really doing the the full research first, because our our country says if you can't make money off of it, if I can't take this and make uh, uh make a, a commodity. Sorry, I'm forgetting my word, but I'll get back to commodify. it. If I can, commodify. Yeah, if I, can commodify. Something, if I can modify this and I can't make this into something profitable, it's worthless. That is already a whole nother problem that we have here. That's but that, that go, but that goes to American culture and some of the things that we value, right? And that, that's what I'm speaking about is 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 the fact that if we don't see um, something we can commodify, then we don't place value in it, which is why I know we're going to have a longer conversation about black wealth, but and, and I'll save my thoughts for that when we have that conversation, but that's why... Um, I agree with Lawrence in terms of what he thinks is missing, but I think there are also are some other pieces. I'm not sure, Kamari. I know one thing that you think should be added, but I think you probably already know where I'm going. What I think should be. Oh, added. Wait a minute. If you agree with Lawrence, then why didn't you agree with what I said when we was in D.C.? I did agree with what you said when you were in D.C. I never disagreed with you. I just thought it was funny the way you said it. I never disagreed with you. I never disagreed with you. That's okay. The thing. So what was, wait, yeah, he said my delivery sucked, y'all. So what, what was wrong with what I said? How, how could I have said it better? Basically, stop following these fucking lottery ticket scenarios and <laughs> oh, put your head in the book. As KRS one said, take your pull it, take your book. Mm, damn right, I'm messing, messing it up, y'all. Yeah, now you're messing up his yeah, card. He's still mad. He's still mad. Leave he's it alone. Mad. What to prove the point? Hey, just, yes. just be outside, just be outside the conference. Just be right outside the conference. Yeah, set up no, but I love I did love the conference, right? I loved anytime black folks get together. It was a great conversation with Dr. Dr. Jared Ball um, and another sister. I can't think of her name on the top of my head, but was talking about, he named one of the people, he named one of the platforms, he named EYL, and he named it how dissatisfied he was with how they promote themselves and have guests and don't fact check. These are all the things he said. And I thought it was a great conversation, but that got clipped. So no, I mean again, that conversation was because he's he was naming names, right? He was naming names hard. And, and, and someone someone on the panel with him were like, you know, taken up for them. So, but that was a great conversation. I mean, nobody's above critique. So so it is what it is. But I, I just feel like um what you said, it wasn't a problem with what you said. I just thought it was funny how you said, like I said, you were you're the finance rebel. That's that's your brand, and you were doing that. Is it my brand or is it who I'm really am? I mean, could, who I am. Could things be true. I guess. Is he yeah. Batman or is he Bruce Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> like, <what's going> on? <laughs> which one is it? <laughs> which one's the identity? Yeah. Nah, but I think it makes a lot of sense, man. I think in the end of the day, we do want to see people succeed, and that's really what the whole point is. And to everybody's point, there's a lot of desperation. There's a lot of need in the community, and there's a lot of people just trying to, you know, make a buck I mean, off of their need. So it's problematic at times. And I agree overall, like we just went really hard in 2020 to 2021, not to say Bitcoin or the blockchain wasn't a thing before that. It was around that time. Everything went nuts. People were just trying to make money off of anything and they just dug themselves into a bad situation. Yeah. I mean, I want to make sure I give Jimmy uh, equal time. So hold on, y'all. Uh, I want we... you to see my, my dapper brother on here on stage dropping knowledge. There we go. Oh, you went and found that clip. A bit about myself, my background is in uh, real estate. So I've pretty much done everything in real estate from development to investing, to selling property. You name it, I've done it. Um, I spend most days studying real estate data. And um, real estate was like the love of my life. Up until about 2016 when my partner introduced me to Bitcoin. So it got turned out. <laughs> I'm like, are you like and calling me a loser? First, I said, man, get out of my face. I'm not trying to hear that, right? So... Um, but he kept pestering me and pestering me and pestering me. So, you know, that's my brother. So I said, okay, I'll jump in. And it was one of the greatest decisions of my life. Since then, I've just studied real estate, uh, real estate as well as Bitcoin and figured out uh, how to bring the two together. Um, so and so now we got other influencers talking about going to Panama 
and blind real estate and blockchain. <laughs> but you know, it's just the combination. It's just yeah, the slow, are, the slow yeah. decline. Well, you are shady, yo. <laughs> no, and the funny thing is, I'm a fan. I'm actually a fan, bro. Like you don't even understand. Like my Slim heart shady, broke yo. a lot of times. Like, come on, Slim shady, yo. No, nah, there's no sleep <laughs> now. Just, but listen, it is what it is. I wouldn't call it um I wouldn't call it capitalism. Um, but I, I do agree with Liz that anytime we feel we can sell something or should not, we'll sell it. So I mean, listen, like I said, no no everything's for sale critique, and that includes capitalism. So we can mm -hmm. critique capitalism as well. And I know me and Kamari have gotten the debates about this because Kamari hates when I Yeah, I don't it. really feel like the stuff we describe as capitalism. I don't think capitalism really is amazing. Capitalism. I'm not too sure why we mad at it. Like, I'm not mad at no, it at no. all. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, not mad at it. Mad at it. Listen, not not mad. it's not <laughs> like let's let it, let it cook, let it let it marinate because the Listen. other systems around the world ain't right. Again, I'm not saying that any system is better or anything like that, but I'm just saying that it's it's possible for something to be the best system, but also it's still possible. Have problems. Listen, there's, nothing, we, there's no such if, thing as utopia. If we want to do more uh, Batman references, Bane was Bane really the bad guy or good? No, he guy? wasn't. No, he wasn't. Was, he was, he was, he on was the bad guy. What are you talking about? No, what are you talking about? Listen, like, he was high Bane. the entire time. Why is this Bane. a thing? I support Bane. Bane. I support Thanos. Um, and you support... Oh, or, Thanos is another one. I'm just saying, were they or is it all perspective? Because capitalism can be a great thing in some spaces and capitalism can be a terrible situation in others. All I'm saying is... But can we at least... But wait, this is all I ask for. Can we at least define it correctly? Because what we're really talking about is corporatism. And so that's all the thing. And I know that's not what we're talking about in the show. We can debate that another time. But let's real quick, before we switch to the next segment, let's say what's up to the people. Don Johnson's in the building. Don. Oh, Don. Well, I know Kamari, I also support Wilson Fisk. Um, the Kingpin. I, don't, I think he was um, you know, misunderstood as well. So basically every bad guy in the situation. Really? No, I, listen. I, I mean, I was cool with Killmonger. I, I, I could see his perspective, but I understand what? that too. What? But, you but, I, but here's this. But here's this. Here. Really? Yes. He was just trying to improve his community. Now, hear me out, though, right? A lot of the 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 good, um, oh, especially when it comes to the, the series on TV, part of what makes the, the, the good ones good is the fact that there's a part of all of the villains that you kind of understand. Not all of it, but there's a small part of every one of them that you kind of understand. And I think that's part of what makes the good series good. That's why. You know, um, DC sucks because they just make their bad guys just like completely evil. What well, Batman, well, Batman what kinda, well, Batman kind of toes the line sometimes, but sometimes that's okay. what I was gonna say. When you watch like you know Superman or any of the other ones, it's like, but Marvel does a good job of making a piece of some of their villains. Like, like I understand where he's coming from a little bit, you know. Mm, okay. Okay. Yes, Don. Let's make wealth black again. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Thank you for the reminder. All right. So we got some ones. T, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Romaine's in the building. Hey, she's, only here she's only here because Jimmy here. Here you, here you go. Here you go. <laughs> What's up, Don? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. The White Palmer with the $2. Oh, it's, it's Canadian dollar, too. The $2 super chat. Thank you. Oh, and the education is on deck. So I got to look. I haven't looked at the loony uh, recently. So I got to look and see how that converts. <laughs> yes, time. The shit coin. <laughs> K Diggy's in the building. What's up, baby? <laughs> yeah, Don is definitely a class thing. But class and race a lot of times are hard to separate. Dude needs to stay in his lane. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Dang, I can't even I can't even sub out here. Oh, uh, there's my guy. <laughs> Pocket watching with JT. Listen, JT gets me more beef than my stuff, right? <laughs> JT does all this stuff. And here's funny. Jimmy has actually witnessed this, right? Oh, I have. I mean, listen, I got I know, I know you have this. Right? If I share yeah. one of JT's clips in my story, I get people start coming I'm at my about, But that ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about internally within some of our people. Oh, yeah. When JT does something, some of our friends will cuss me out mm -hmm. because they can't get the JT. What kind of shit is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got here, you be dropping bombs for people, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah Jim, 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 Jim. Yes, yes. Oh, but great stuff. But let's let's get into it. Listen, there's been a topic 
I've been itching to talk about. I said I wasn't going to talk about it. And magically, Liz appeared. And it was like, boom, we can definitely get at it. We can definitely. So, mm-hmm. if you all have not seen us, Tyler Perry has been under attack, ladies and gentlemen. This black billionaire is being under attack because they said he is slandering the sisters, telling them to settle, and he's not doing right, and he's not holding brothers accountable the same way he was asking for sisters to show a little love and compassion. So I see you rearing up, Liz. I see you ready to go. Mm-mm, I'm quiet. You going to play the segment? Cause I'm, I'm going to play the clip. I'm going to play the clip. <laughs> they're, also, they're also attacking Oprah, too. So I'm a, Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm like everybody. That's just, I'm, yeah, I'm everybody. just It was Jay-Z, Oprah, and now Tyler Perry. Let's go. Listen, every everybody's under attack. That is correct. That is absolutely Puffy correct. was in there, too. Puffy's always in there. Oh, I mean, at, at this point, Puffy... Listen, anybody rich um, gets it. Now, there's some people who deserve it more so than others. But everybody can get it, right? Mm. Everybody can get it. So let me play this clip. I think I did a better job this time, (laughs) y'all. Pulling up the clips. And I did not. I messed this one up, but I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up anyway. (laughs) This is going to be a rough night, y'all. Bear with me. Pray for me. Pray for me. So let's pull this one up as well. Here is the clip of Tyler Perry talking about black love, y'all. Being a waste of breathable air. <laughs> damn, damn. Because his his gift may not be your gift. Exactly. Right, that uh, is. All right, and that, this is Sweetie. Her name is. Uh, do you know her name, Liz? Mm-mm. That's a nice house, though. Let's be real. That couch is on point. Okay, so just to be clear, this this okay. lady is like Tyler Perry's assistant and stylist and all of that. But actually, let me find. I think I do know her name. Actually, give me a second. And so, you know, Tyler says some things that people are upset with. So, I've been wanting to talk about it, but uh, since the sisters are under are rebutting against this. I felt like as a dude with the Y chromosome, I shouldn't be the one talking. It, it's a uh, Crystal so. Hazlett is her name. Right. Crystal Renee yes. Hazlett. Yes. All right. So here's the clip. He yeah. said that we were one of our many nights at your island, darling, in the King's Landing room mm. at the table. You said, mm. and he just hit you. You probably was on the gummy there too. Mm. He was like, meet me at my worst. Yeah. And we were all like, wow. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And 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 anybody who can't do that, that doesn't mean they're not worthy of mm-mm, you. Mm-mm. That means that they need to either attempt, mm-hmm. try, learn, mm-hmm. find out enough about you to be able to figure out what that is. Yes. And that's not money because, yep. because you listen. A, a lot of women, especially black women, and mm-hmm. I might get in trouble for saying this, but I will. In the in in our society right now, mm-hmm. b- black women are making a lot more money for the most part than yeah. black men. Right, there are a lot of black men who, who are successful, but for the most part, black women are making the money. So you, if you can find love, if that man works, you know, at whatever job, mm-hmm. and is a good, Uh-oh. good man, and is good to you, mm-hmm. and honors and honors the house, and honors his wife, and does what he can, mm-hmm. because. His his gift may not be your gift. All right, so Les, do you have anything with any problem with what he said so far? Absolutely. The okay. minute the statement wow. was, the minute that his statement was the the black woman, the minute he said, Well, women, especially black women, is where I already had to draw a line. Because you know what? Um, my white sisters, my Indian sisters, and women of other races do not get told. You know what? Here's the thing that you need to change, specifically you, about how you marry and if your partner has more money. And so the minute he said women, especially black women, I already was upset because I already knew he's about to say some nonsense. So wait a minute. Isn't yeah. his, his audience is black? So he's always Medea. Oh, no. He has a Christ far it. larger audience than just black people and, and black women. And he has he has a, a far further reach than we realize, hence why he's able to be what a billionaire at this point. Can I make a comment yeah. though? Because what, what bothered me the most, and again, this is coming. Wait from a minute, wait a minute. Something bothered you? 
No, it did bother me too. What bothered me? Hear me out though. Okay. Where is he getting this data from? Because every time I look, because it's not the data, it's not supported. By, ooh, Jimmy, I was gonna get there. Every time, every time I look up, black black women aren't far out earning black men. That's just no, not true. It's not true. It's so not that's true. to me, to me, and it's, it's one of those narratives that's been going on, and people just repeat it and repeat it. And I'm like, well, look at the it's numbers. Not no true. one ever looks at the numbers. And to me, that's what bothers me. Jimmy, I was pulling yeah, up. I, numbers, kind of just, I, I see where your point is, but I also kind of could see it the other way too, because there okay. is the median. The median black male, the median black woman, obviously, in that sense, some some women are not working or they, they were part time jobs. So therefore, mm -hmm. that median for black women is always lower than it is for black men, just like it's, it's the same thing for all other communities as well. Yes. So it's just a thing that it is. doesn't even mean that black black guys are out earning, you know, any other race. It just means that we're just, you know, at the very bottom to begin with. So then you have the no, next, you know, statistically, 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 then you have the next thing, you know, you finish marinating this thing. So the next part is like there are urban millennial uh, black women or the urban millennial black people, different socio class. You have that a lot more black women are, are super educated, meaning they have the degrees and they know and they know everything to quote that, that, that movie. Basically, they have double degrees. They have master's degrees. They, they really make a lot more wealth um, compared to their average car depart. And this is why we see on social media all the time women saying that they cannot find their equal. So both of these things could be right at the same time. There could be the fact that we're not making a lot of money. There's also could be a fact that a lot of black women are, are you know, getting real busy out here and making the money. I've hear people say that I've never seen data that supports There's it. There's no That's data that saying. supports it. And I'm simply going to, and I actually like, I listened to an, a completely different podcast a few weeks before by actually, um, dead ass is what it's called with Kadeen and Deval and Deval is actually starring in some of Tyler Perry's and, and sisters yep. and then Zach and whichever. So I find it interesting that he went to say this or that this was a conversation. I don't know the timeline and that his, one of his actors actually sat and did the research. And then I went and also looked at it myself at one point because I keep hearing this. So I want to make sure I can't find it. Yeah, there's, there's, no, the there's report no, doesn't exist. Because no, it, it doesn't exist because there's never been a, a data stratified just specifically on just black people. The closest we get is Mc, the McKinsey and company reports or maybe the color of wealth, uh, color of money reports, so on and so forth. They exist, but there's just never been that stratification to realize, OK, how much black people really have based on their socio class? Some people are, hey, you know, middle of Mississippi. Some people are, are you know, in the tech bubble in, in California. So there isn't that that finite place that we're going to find it. But you could kind of link around different understanding that, hey, there's uh, black women in America. That no, are I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not going to stand for this. Okay. Okay. When, you, when you keep things equal, when you start looking at, hey, a black man and uh, who's a CEO or working in corporate America at higher levels, when you start taking things and keeping them equal, keep things, certain things neutral, black men are still out earning black women in those spaces. And even when you look at the rate of marriage, black men who make more money are actually so highly marrying black women. And even in those marriages, when you have higher earners, the black men are still making more money just based on the fact that black men or men in general already have a higher percentage of earning, like they get more of the dollar than women do. And then when you stratify it by race, black men are still making more money. So there's no data. Even when you keep things neutral, if you want to talk about me and the man who's pumping gas down the street, yes, I make more money than him, honey. That's always going to be the case because we're in two different different job fields. But what you cannot do is sit here and conflate and say that black women are out earning black men when statistically that's just not true, especially when you keep certain factors neutral. It I'm sorry. It so for me, sense. for me, uh, Lawrence, hold, on, hold, on, that hold, hold on, Jimmy. Hold on. Let's play the rest of the clip. All right, because there's, there's there's some more meat yeah, here. Let me get my some. last point off though. Come on. I just want to say one we, thing. We, 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 I'm we, married we, to a black we, woman just for the record. I know. <laughs> Oh, no, as, as am I. But I, I just want to say that to Go me, ahead, Lawrence said, uh, you said that that data hasn't been like, you know, stratified. Or so I agree with that. So for me, as someone who works in data, if the data doesn't exist, we can't speak to it because we're making assumptions. I, I have a problem with people making assumptions because that's one of those things that I hear people say constantly and constantly. And I'm always looking it up. I'm like, where are they getting this from? And I can't find anywhere. So. Now, maybe if it's stratified and we find out that it could be the case, but until that happens, we got to stop speaking on things that's just not factually accurate because people just run with things and, you know, they play with the truth. Facts matter. Oh, you mean like Uncle Tom? Thank you. Mm -hmm. But never mind. No, okay, I, I see where you're going. Never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> All right, but hold on. Let, let, let's let Tyler continue to cook, y'all. Let's give him... Finish this up. Finish this up. I might get in trouble for this, but... 
Exactly. That is okay. Mm -hmm. That's not somebody who's beneath you. Yeah. That's somebody who came to love you at your worth, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And as long as he's secure in himself to mm -hmm. know that, yep, she makes most of the money. All I can pay is the light bill. As long as she's comfortable enough to say, I'm going to cover the mortgage and all the other stuff. You can the light bill. Baby, you can take me to dinner every now and then. Mm -hmm. That is fine. Yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but that's so hard for a lot of people to take in because that means... No, no, no. I need somebody to who is <laughs> I need I they need to make five times more and we've all saw those. We've all saw those ratchet ass polls on the street interviews where people people are asking women, how much money does your mate need to make? Five hundred thousand, six hundred thousand, hundred and fifty thousand. It's all over the place. But this is a thing. This is a real thing. But let's go. And I got to have the I got to have well, you uh -huh. keep, but go on, keep, keep, go on, keep your list, baby. Yeah. God, God bless you. Hope it happens. Go on, keep your list. <laughs> but when you talk about just someone to love you and support yes. you, I, I know people who have, who whose men can't touch what they make. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when you see them together, that love, that support, that, that I got you, babe, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I remember we, I was having a conversation with you and I was going, I, I can admit that I had fallen under that like, okay, I actually may have misunderstood what meet me at my worth meant. I thought meet me at my worth was meet me at my net worth. Meet me at my net worth, right, right. No, not your net worth. Right. Meet me, at least meet me at my net So y'all got a problem with this. The whole meet me at their worth. It's Y'all feel it's not accurate. It's telling women to settle. And it's not fair that that's the general consensus. I know Lawrence is out of it. Was that Fatima from um the show? Um, is it? Yeah, no, she's on one of the. No, no, no. She's on one of the shows. Yeah, okay, I don't think that's like, Fatima. She, she, she looked like Zach's chick from. No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Because I, I, I actually watched the show, but I see the I, I, I ran into my buddy watching that show. I'm like, what the heck is this? Listen, my, um, my dad listen, watches listen, it, listen, so I'm not. I'm not. Listen, I'm not listen, messing. No with it's like it's like, like black soap alone. opera at that point. That's all I know. It's a it new is. black soap opera. Leave it alone. But once you start, if you sit down and someone else is watching, it, you start watching. It's one of them things where you be like, all right, so so what happens? And then you what find happen next. Uh oh, we got a woman that agrees with Tyler. All right. Go ahead. I, I, I just have a question. I have a question. Have any of you all dated a broke man before? Whoa. Um, Damn. I've been the broke man. No, no, no. No, no, no. I, 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 I been, yeah. have, no, no, no. You may have been broke. Have you ever dated one before? I mean, I've dated a broke well, woman. I don't. I don't uh, like okay. Me. Okay. Right. I think, I, I think I she's trying to get to a point you. here. Let's go. Do you, Let's go. do you know how insufferable broke people in general are insufferable in a way that is really not containable, especially when they're trying to get themselves together? And when you find yourself next to someone who is out earning you in the dynamic of a relationship, particularly when you have certain things that are pressed upon men to be able to do and achieve and have. It causes a really interesting dynamic. This is why I ask, have you dated a broke man before? Because if you have ever had to experience a man who is not where he wants to be financially, they are insufferable. I mean, I could imagine because we, like, are, are we have, I mean, uh, the male. I, 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 I stand by what I say because I've also been broke. And I know from conversations with friends when I was when I was not where I wanted to be, I was I was not the greatest person to be around. But thank God I was loved through grace. However, I was not dating. I'm but I'll say you. this, right? Well, hold on, y'all. I'll say this. So, and I wasn't no. expecting to be saved. Mm. I, okay. Yeah, he dropped. But I'll bar. say this: there are plenty of people where the relationship is lopsided towards a woman in terms of income. Mm -hmm. I have several clients that are like that. Mm -hmm. I have one client right now, at the top of my head. His wife's a doctor. He's a contractor. Mm -hmm. He builds homes. She makes more money though. He's still the man now. And there are a lot of people that feel like the man has to make the most amount of money in order for the relationship to be balanced and fair and for the man to be able to lead, whatever that means. Right? These you know are all hate, things. You know why I hate these conversations, though? I do, too. Because people got to do what works for them, right? Thank Tyler, you. Tyler Perry I agree. Can feel, he can feel how he feels. <laughs> Because I honestly don't care how he feels, right? But what? But, but what all right, well, you know, right. let's. And, and, let's and, and the whole thing about like hold on, the internet, like. Wait, it's, hold it's, on, Jerry. Let, let, let's let's continue the rest of it. Let's finish the. Let's finish it out. Yeah. So we can have a complete conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Work, yeah. Okay. Well, I think that this part, I think this part here is a key part where he talks about Stebbin and Oprah, and nobody talks about Stebbin is a lover. Hey. 
yeah. And um, I was talking it's to him. It's one of my mentors. I was like, this, this, and this, and this, and I've done this, this. And you're like, wait, 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 wait. Stop. Mm-hmm. He was like, don't make it about money. Mm-hmm. And this is when I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, it was like, pff, like a, it just went off and I was like, I see what you're saying. You were like, Chris, I used to do the same thing. I would like be doing all these things for someone or people around me. And I'm like, they're not doing, I'm not getting anything in return, yeah. you know? And we fall into that sometimes. And you said, but then I thought about it. They can't do for me the way I do. For you. No. It's just like, no. they can't. No. You got, and when you explain it like that, if he is giving you all these other things, then that's something you work with. And I did, I, I literally completely misconstrued what meet me at my work worth in that mm. moment but worth is more than that right you know and that's right. when i was like wow like this is it's way deeper yeah you got to remove the money from the situation yeah. because it's just going to cloud it mm-hmm. and then you have your girlfriend and this friend they're saying yes. right, he's doing this and he ain't got that he do- mm-hmm. you don't understand the love that we have exactly. for each other and that is what is important and so i guess that's the this is the hard part for me that we are having a problem with i'm saying take the money out of it Let's just focus on the relationship part. You can't. Isn't that the ideal thing? But you he's been can't. saying this from the very beginning, though. With every movie right. he's dropped, like this is yes. not a new thing. So I'm it's actually kind of like now I'm listening to even more and more. I'm like he's always done this. Any narrative he well, ever had in the movies was basically the same. Because thing he knows right it does this right. It creates. Well, it, it, it's salacious. It creates right. clickbait. It gets yeah, conversation yeah. going. So and he I said believe that. that from the start. I don't even think it's salacious. I, mean, I think it's just. As no, no, no. We, we live in a capitalist society. You need a two income household to survive in America. I'm not going yeah, to do that right now. Right. And I'm going to also make the point that um, you relationships shouldn't be transactional and period because they feel they're fake they're superficial you actually have to build connections with people but also at the same exact time if marriage is a business right which i've heard many times at the black wealth project and we're talking about <laughs> and we're talking about being able to elevate your community as well as uh, well, starting with elevating your household you also have to understand when you figure out what works for you you all have to be on the same page financially so i'm not asking and a lot of women, black women, and I, I know doctors whose husband make less. They're not. We're not asking for you to make three, four times what we make. We are asking that if there's going to be a imbalance in the income, then there has to be an a step up somewhere else. Because the problem with a lot of these dynamics and conversations is that black women are still taking on the bulk of everything. I need a wife. Minute. Isn't that what he's saying? He said, "Meet me at my worth, not but, money, but worth." No, no, no. Said, but but nobody's meeting black women at their worth. That's the problem. And but then you're asking talking us. About everybody. He's talking about a specific. No, no, no. No, no, no. I mean, what he's no, saying. no, no. Let's d- dial it back and listen right, to me. He said, me. By the way, but I got to say this. By the, by the, by the, I got to say this, Liz. Give me one second. I just love how Liz just came on here and her full black woman regalia. And it's telling me what the fuck to do with not a problem and saying it with her chest. I love it. <laughs> Go ahead, Liz. Rock out. I'm sorry. I had to say that. Listen, I'm. I'm all I'm saying is. No one meets black women at our worth. We're expected to do more, take on more and and greater loads just culturally. And then also bringing forth the community in the ways in which we are trailblazing. We are doing a lot. We have degrees, we have the titles, all those fun things. Some of us have the money and some of us don't, even though we have the titles and the the educational debt. So we don't want to be transactional. I agree with Jimmy. We want to do what works in our relationships, but then that also requires everyone stop listening to things like a billionaire who was once poor and worked himself up and got his billions of dollars. Like stop listening to this man. I'm at the point where I'm just like, if you can't meet a black, if you can't meet a black woman at her worth, because you expect her to do everything and submit and have the money and be okay with you not pulling your weight in the ways that we need, then what are we talking that's about? That's not what he said. He said that yeah, I, yeah, I definitely think that uh, you added a lot of uh, uh, because a context here. A lot of because a lot of the conversations lot of around this are coming from men who refuse to step up to the plate in other ways. You Coming can't say them. you want to run the household, lead the household. You don't make the majority of the money. You're not taking care of the kids. You're not doing the laundry. You're not going to get the education. You're not going to therapy. Yet I still got to figure out how to bring the six figures home, take care of these kids, change these diapers, care for my aging parents, and I got to go deal with corporate America. You lost me. And that's right. the reality. Let me, can I say something, Kamari? Hold on. Liz done. won. Liz won. This is over. The round's done. We've been teaching. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's not about winning. I'm, I'm, saying it doesn't it doesn't go against, I'm saying it doesn't go against what anybody thinks. I just feel like this is one of those things where when I'm out in the real world, 
People don't even be talking about this stuff, man. It's an internet thing, man. This is an internet they thing, don't. man. Like, and, and, and sometimes on the internet, man, it's this whole this man versus, especially black man versus black woman and stuff. I just get tired of it. Like I, I mute it all. Oh, entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> like I, don't, yeah, I don't, yo, yo, I don't be trying to hear none of this, man. Because I'm in spaces with women who are powerful, men who are powerful. They ain't even talking about this. They're not They're talking not. about my. You know, this, this is this is. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give them that because no, we are on Beyonce. Like, like a lot of us are married. Planet. A lot of us are married and we're good. We moved on from that dating scene, but a lot of people are actually dealing with this right now. And I think these th those things could be, and this, these conversations tend to be so layered because people are coming in with baggage. So he said a couple words, other people was like, but he he meant this, he meant that. He, he also meant this other thing. I've been carrying this all this pressure on me. And it's like, slow down. He merely just implied that we should probably look at more of the character of a person. I never really agree with the guy 100%. I just, that's not a, that's a fair thing to say. And well, you don't agree with nobody 100% of the time. Hey, I just, I just think it's everybody's opinion. And, and if you can't listen to a person that went from being struggling poor to being a billionaire, I'm like, who are we listening to? <laughs> like, what's the but problem? But he didn't even direct it to like, the people. Sometimes let's listen poor. to people. Let's just, let's just take the information yeah. that somebody says and see if it applies. And if it doesn't apply, it's fine. But you're right. I agree with you because I think a lot of black men. A lot of young black men need to step up as far as making more money, getting out, making more work, becoming more skillful. That's something that to be said about every one of our communities, every one of our young black men need to be out there working right now. And I agree with that. All I'm saying is I'm in these dating streets and it's... God it's, bless you. No, please and thank you. But I'm, I'm simply going to say, because I've, I've had all these conversations and I'll let it go, but this I'm like, this is truly an internet conversation, but also at the same time, I see how it affects the dating world. And so... I don't come into any situation expecting anyone to do anything. I just, I see where you're at and I figure out if that makes sense for me. The biggest thing that I think is a challenge is everybody wants to do the bare minimum to get the greatest reward. That is our current dating scene. And it is trash. I mean, that's the world. Yeah, that's basically what, that's the all you got left is hookah world. and Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> all you have left is hookah and Hennessy. <laughs> exactly. Um, so do what makes sense for your relationship, but also find a partner that you can build with. All right, Liz got the final word on that, y'all. Yeah, GC, man. GC, listen, GC, GC, GC came out. He's a liar. Hey, G. I mean, you, better, you better let him know. My biggest critique is when people use POMA statistics. They just come up and your higher percentage of uh, you know such and such. I'm like, where are you even getting this data from? Stats don't exist, man. They don't. Data doesn't exist. And then on the internet, people be straight putting percentages to it. Ninety-six percent of women. Where are you getting this from? It's straight lies, but it gets clicks. But it gets yes, clicks. You got it. Got it. Got it. Since they monetize uh, Twitter, it gets even worse. Mm. Now they're giving mm. you a whole, now they're giving you a whole thread full of this lie, lies. Did, uh, and then they get rid of the block feature. <laughs> yes. Hey Don, I'm sorry, Don. I did get a little hot. I I don't really apologize, but I did get heated. No, I don't want you to apologize. I think, it's bad, I think you you made a lot of valid points. Yeah. My guy, GC. That's facts, GC. Like. The stuff that your know, stuff be happening online, and then you get offline and realize, like, damn, this ain't real life. I think, no, but, you know what, but you know what, though? So let's read, let's read GC's comment, right? Because remember, this show also comes out on the audio podcast every week, every Monday. So GC says, Truth be told, I only see chicks saying this crazy stuff online, IRL, or in real life. Mm -hmm. They be having babies of dudes that's not making all this money. I agree with that. I mean, it's I truth to that, that too. Mm -hmm. Yep, it sounds good on the internet. Now, Great. all right. So, Nicole says this. She says, at one point, my husband and I made it total what I make now. When I fell ill, he worked three jobs to take care of us. Once I got on my feet, I hustled to be where I am. At one point, I told my husband to quit his job. By the way, Nicole's the honey hustler. So, she making all that money selling all that honey. No pun intended. Yeah, I was about to say, you got to clean that up a little bit. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> That's literal, literal honey. Like, like she yeah. literally <laughs> sells honey. She's a honey farmer. She's a black woman honey farmer. Yes, love right? it. Oh, got to yeah. All right, so he's working now, and I make way more money than him. My goal is to retire my husband. Shout out to that. He's still the head of the household, and he is still a man. Amen to that. Listen, man, man, you call that equally yoked, right? So mm -hmm. the, the numbers don't matter. They're on the same page in terms of their goals and what they want to do. 
gotta do what makes you happy. Man. But your marriage is, a part, marriage is a partnership. That's not like there's always give and take. At one point, somebody's gonna be doing the, the breadwinning more than the other. At some point, someone's gonna be cooking and cleaning. But you have to understand if anything happens to your partner, as that was the case for her, you have to be able to step up. So you're looking for somebody to be a partner, not a servant, <laughs> not not a slave, and not sacrificing themselves to fulfill you where you're not fulfilled. Fact. What's up, Karen? Mm-hmm. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Uh, I don't think you miss much. We about to get into it. We about to get into the main meat of the night, y'all. <laughs> All right. So Don Johnson says, Stebbin is a powerhouse in this industry. Mm-hmm. He's not some low level key employee, but I don't have a photo of the guy. If you like, I, don't, I don't have like Oprah. a picture of it in my mind. Like, I, 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 listen, Stebbin is one of my heroes, man. And he does not embarrass Oprah. We stand him. He don't embarrass listen, her. Listen, Stebbin is my hero. Because Stebbin lives an amazing life and he don't care what none of y'all say. He said, don't mess up the bag. Keep uh, your uh, That's what he said. Okay? That's right. That's what any real man would do. All right. So JC says, I'm I'm like Jimmy Main. <laughs> oh, man. Do it works for you. Absolutely. Facts. Da, 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 da. Let's get through these. That free dad is in the building. What's up, bro? I ain't seen you in a minute. Yes, the red pill, blue pill is designed to keep black men and women warring. I laugh at this buffoonery. Yep, the, yeah. the red pills are, are crazy. Dog, they ruined my timeline. I got I got to reset the algorithm now. Yes, <laughs> then got them out these dating streets. I'd be serving a life sentence. <laughs> Nicole, listen. I thank God I know good lawyers. Mm. That's all. He's <laughs> hitting that billionaire oh, bottom. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible, not out of control. Yeah. Yo. Terrible. However, he's not going to okay. mess that up. That's what I'm saying. That, that's an unproblematic man right there. He's like, oop, nope, don't mess this up. I'm good. Hey, hey. Legend. So, listen, what we wanted to talk to y'all tonight about the, the, the nuts and bolts of all this, black wealth, right? There's a lot of formulas. There's a lot of studies out there about it. But what does it really take? And does the black community, is the black community armed to really do it? Now, this kind of started because me and Lawrence we're kind of kicking this about. And then Lawrence shared an article with me that I thought was really, really interesting from Princeton. Lost it for a minute, y'all. But I thought it was really, really good. Lawrence, you want to talk about the article? Yeah, just for clear, point of class. I'll bring it on. That's from, yeah, it's definitely not from Clint, Princeton directly. It was just one of the people that wrote part of it is from Princeton. But it's actually from the Federal Reserve Institute when they kind of do these kind of studies and they they I guess, level it out to different universities to to rock out on it. And they came down to the wealth of two nations, uh, the U.S. racial wealth gap from 1860 to 2020. And from that point, this entire white paper that that exists, they pulled a lot of data based off the wealth that black people have had post um, post emancipation and really tracked it all the way down. And they found very interestingly enough that black wealth conversion or the wealth gap conversion actually happened from 1860 to like around 1920. So we basically went from having zero wealth at all and just shortening down that, that time frame into like maybe what, 20 to one ratio. And then yeah, we dropped. slowly stagnated into what is, what is now around like seven to one ratio. Now I, I love to read economic papers and all these studies, right? So when you look at it, from the start of 1860 to about 1865, we've seen this big drop, right? So when we get to, we got to 1865 or 1870-ish. What was happening? This is why history is so important. Black folks were making major strides in Reconstruction. And then what happened? <laughs> A couple of things All that, other that things ended up happening... Came. Yeah, there's a couple of things that ended up happening in that period. You found that black people started one. We were the laboring class. Like Mm -hmm. when you kind of like get rid of your laboring class, the enslaved people, you just kind of send them out into the world. They still have the majority of the skills. So people basically what they they leaned into what they already know. So they made sure that they were focused on getting homes because the home was not just for the heck of having the four walls and and open for entertainment to other people. No, your home was also your farm. That was your sustenance. So basically, everybody focused on getting their home together. They also uh, congregated more in the church. That's where they got majority of their information from. And they were able to exclusively bring in a lot more um, income into their household because the other counterpoint, the, the other people, 
they didn't have the same uh, ethos as far as work habits. So they were able to really shut that down. And then you have all these uh, pervasive barriers that came in from the 1900s uh, with uh, Jim Crow laws that really started um, putting some damper. And then we went right into World War uh, One in 1920s, I think. Was it 1920? No, no, 1910s. Yeah, I mean, I, 1910s was World War One. Right. I mean, everything you said is, is accurate, right? But I, I think it does a distrust to try to speed through it, right? Because yes, we were buying homes, we were farming, we were also elected officials, we were business folks, we were starting colleges. There was a lot that was going on. And then Black O's came and they said, hey, if you ain't working, we're taking your ass to jail. And then, you know, a lot of other things started to happen. A lot of other racial things right. started to happen because That's a lot it. of folks were joke. What are you saying, Liz? Some of the massacres for towns start to start. Absolutely. To Absolutely. I mean, Tulsa didn't happen until 1921, mm -hmm. but there were a lot of other massacres, right? The and I always... Savings Bank. What's that? The yeah. Savings, savings Bank. But I think that yeah. was 1873 or four, somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah. But then they robbed yeah. Freeman, right? And all the money just disappeared. <laughs> so, like, it's, it's, it's a crazy time period when you see the slope. It makes sense. But it also shows that when the system is not flat out attacking black folks, we'll do just fine. We'll just do just fine, in my opinion. When has the system, what else did you when get from When this? has the system not attacked black folks? Well, the system has always attacked black folks, for the record, right? But during that time, there was a little bit of a lull, yeah. right? Even though we know 1865 was not truly emancipation. That was a whole <laughs> I don't know what law you're talking about, folks. Now, yeah, but I think it is a law. When you talk about that that section, especially post uh, Civil War, was the bloodiest American war in history. That kind of situation. So you'd have a law in regards to who's coming to do these attacks. So there was a period of time where we did have at least some 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 leg room to really make some strides, and that's what we see in this data. So this is 104 pages. This is yeah, I'm, I'm speeding through what it is when we're looking at the graph itself. But generally, that's what it covers. It covers all the detail about what's going on, minus likely, let's say, that the deaths in Civil War or even the deaths from uh, World War One and World War Two. I think that's also significant, in my opinion. I would agree. I would agree. I, so, all right. What's so, wrong, Jimmy? What's wrong? No, I don't think there ever was a law, right? So, so, so. Wait a minute. Say that again. I don't think there was really a law. There was no law. We've always been under attack, right? We're, so that, to me, that. It's a fact, right? We've always been under attack. But wait a minute. Let's, also, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, there can be a law and you can still be under attack, though, too. But I don't think there was a law. I don't think there's ever been a law. Um, well, your stats, man, your data, man, the data says there was a law. We're no, looking at the curve the right data. there. So that's your interpretation of the data. Your interpretation that there's a uh, law. That's what we're going to do right? now. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that the, 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 there, there's nowhere that says it was a law. You see that there's a slope that comes down, but you're giving your logic. Yeah, we're not saying there's like a, a a white flag was raised and nothing was going on. You're just saying that based off of what's been going on for the last there was, like there was a years, better opportunity. It was like a well. slowdown of that kind of direct aggression. So it was maybe it was you know it was maybe indirect. It was definitely hey, you can't drive around to this other side. But you were so far, you're kind of a little bit insulated. There so was a, a less, bit, less, like, a less aggressive percent. attack on building yeah. black wealth. Let's yeah, maybe 10, 20 less percent. Yeah, yeah, twenty percent decrease. I'm making I'll up say. numbers. When you when you when you watch, um, and this comes from my time in working at the Johnson House and um, having conversations with the children, and also hearing the video and, and audio of people who lived through that time, there was still a constant attack going on, right? So so there there you know I understand what you guys are saying, but even beyond that, um, the reason why reparations is such an interesting topic is because even if we're allowed to do certain things during that quote unquote law, um. Wealth was already accumulated to a certain point with with other folks that we will never be able to catch up with. I'll give you an example. When you in Philadelphia, when you start to do the research and look at um, the deed history and, and the recordings of some of the most valuable land in this city in, in, the, in our central business district, mm -hmm. it's been owned by the same families since the 19th century. Right. It was owned at a time that we weren't able to buy. So now when we get our rights and are, are able to buy, they've quadrupled and, and 10x and 100x their money so many times over and they still own the most valuable land that at the time legally speaking we couldn't own right 
So the thing about assets is when we talk about, you know, buying assets as being one of the strategies for, for fixing this, I'm not against that. I agree with that. But understand that there were assets and things set up for other cultures in the 19th century, and which has been consistently increasing over time and will consistently increase over time. And when you do the research in New York, it's the same thing. And that's some of the most viable real estate in the world, not just that city. The same families own it. They have 100-year land leases where their family is getting paid off of something that someone bought in 18, whatever you want to call it, and haven't done anything since. And that wealth has been able to accumulate and multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply, um, which is why people have this argument, this argument for reparations as being part of, um, you know, uh, the, the, the actual repair of what's happened to us economically. I mean, right, but I, nobody's, I, I, nobody's disagreeing with that, Jimmy. I mean, I don't think Lawrence, myself, anybody disagreeing with that. I mean, with what? Yeah, I don't I don't disagree with the idea that there will ever be like a true point of one to one conversion where, you know, black wealth yeah. is exactly white wealth, especially to your point, having that lead start. However, we're we're supposing that white wealth itself is this universal constant that it always exists. People lose wealth over time as well. There's been you know families that completely lost it. So I think it comes down to, you know, when you have the I guess even this grab could show you the mentality of folks at the time. They're just focused on pressing forward the gas and make mm -hmm. sure that they're su surviving, living and they're doing the best that they can for their family. I think that's the mentality that we need to have, because, you know, like a basketball player could wake up in the morning and say, you know what, LeBron James, the best player in the world. And I, I, I can't do anything. But no, they actually get up in the morning. They actually still go show up to practice and they show up to the game. And sometimes they beat LeBron. Sometimes they don't. So, so it comes down to the idea that, yeah, the other person might be a little bit ahead of you or they might have the skills of you. They, have, they might have a lot of things going for them, but you could still do the work for yourself. And I think there, that's where the mentality needs to be. Yes, pure conversion is not there, but there's but not I, 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 I love that analogy, but then I don't because at the same so, time, yeah, it's, it's not if. Yes, we're both basketball players. Yes, we're both NBA professionals. But one of us is obviously had a different set of skills and some things granted to us from jumpstart that's like saying me with like a, a sprained ankle trying to go do a full game against lebron james for championship or anything i'm gonna have an equal i'm gonna have the same numbers or the ability we don't the black community has a sprained ankle we've had one for quite some time and even when Once we, we had good, good days on that sprained ankle it's still a sprained ankle i can't touch lebron james i can't touch kobe bryant i can't touch uh, Steph Curry. I can't touch any of them. Not in the ways that I need to when I get on that court to really grow and grasp wealth. So I like that analogy, but not really because we, we've always had we've always had a hurdle. And even when the mentality is there, we keep hitting the same wall as a community because of the continued blocks that keep coming in the way. That's and, and when I talk about history, on, that's on, say, put, put a pen in that for one second. I, I want to share this one clip. I want to share this one clip. This is the man I think who talks about it the best. Businesses, the resources and all levels of government. Blacks had nothing. Blacks were one foot midgets. And they allowed us then to use integration to walk from our communities, from our ghettos over in their communities, totally disarmed, not understanding anything, blind, naked, and then saying you go and compete. Compete with what? <laughs> oh, that that gets, that, I'm just hit real. Oops, that gets a little crazy. That wasn't the total clip that I wanted, but that gets to some of the points. Like Dr. Claude always talks about how black people were post uh post uh emancipation so i mean i get it but again i see i i see the slope there and the first thing you got to realize that well whoa we know that blacks were doing a lot better right after slavery air quotes right after slavery because technically there were still enslaved people in the 1950s in the south but that's all the conversation but what I'm saying, Kamari, is just because we point out um, systematic issues and the fact that there, you know, there was no law or whatever it may be, doesn't mean that I don't agree that we should be taking action. But both things can be true. We can be taking well, no, action. That's what I'm saying. But but what I'm saying is, it's, it's okay to take action at the same time and acknowledging what history is. Right. Yes, so, I so, think the only so, the only thing the only I guess Hoda was like, well, there was a steep decline there, right? And there have been other historians that have corroborated that information. And we've seen it in history from, again, black, black elected officials in Congress, black home ownership, black land ownership, black farm ownership. A lot of those things were a lot higher in the 1800s, 
like 1870s. Than so it is now. And, 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 you have to look at the history of policy and how do we lose some of that land, right? That's not told in those statistics. Oh, right? but it is. It is. Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. Hold on. But everything's not going to always come out in the statistics. But Jimmy, last week or either week before last, we talked about the attack on the young, the, the sister in Hilton Head, 93 years old, and developers are trying to steal her land, right? Yeah. So part of, part of it is our job to look at some of these things and like talk about it and bring it to like black folks have always been under attack. That's yeah, but, not... but let me finish though. Let me finish my point. My point is all right. Then we're gonna move on. We gotta move on after this. No, because on the internet sometimes people fall on this thing where if you if you criticize a system or talk about things that have happened in history, people jump on the side and say, well, so we're just gonna cry about it and not do nothing. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we take action, but you can take action by still acknowledging what has happened. And what continuously happens, I think there's so many fights that we have as melanated people on, on, on this earth that um, everybody can't focus on um, everything. Right. We, we, we're fighting whether we're talking about the criminal justice system, whether we're talking about health care, whether we're talking about economics, whether we're talking about food deserts. There's so many fights like there's literally a war going on. outside <clears throat> take from, But we need people to be fighting on all fronts. Right. So you need people to have the reparations conversation while you also have people trying to educate and teach our people how to build wealth. Both things can happen at the same time. And that's the only point I'm making. By talking about some of the history and what has happened doesn't mean that we shouldn't be moving forward and trying to do things to accumulate assets right now. So I just want to point that out. Both things can be true. Okay. All right. All, all in favor, say aye. <laughs> all right. So Lawrence. Lawrence, yeah. what else did you find in this paper that you thought was really interesting? Yeah. So over time, what you find is that these different inflection points actually happen and they do matter. You, from the stuff you just brought up, people were focused on land ownership, home ownership, family unit was intact, uh, or at least as best as they could have had it intact. And there was multiple income sources in that household as well. So these are the, the through lines of what is possible within the construct of what's going on in America at any given time. If you do these things, it works. So in, in in summation of what they're trying to say, uh, they, they ended up, one, agreeing with the idea of re uh, reparative justice is important and is actually needed. By the same time, they also looked at these factors and found that three things actually um, created um, almost wealth parity for your household. One, income, um, income, increasing income by at least 8% annually, annualized. That's what's going to get you there. Two, the second one that was uh, the savings rates or investing rate, that should be around 31%. And then the last one is capital gains increases or something you talked about, Jimmy, in regards to the actual it, the capital could be real estate, the capital would be stocks, the capital would be small business. It doesn't really matter what it is, but the capital gains have to be there. So in these three factors, you'll be able to build wealth. And I verified that I looked at even the stuff that me and my wife has been able to do for the last couple of years. And mm -hmm. it's pretty much spot on. And anybody else that's done the same, you know, kind of metrics as far as raising their income to a certain point by at least 8% annual annualized, getting their savings rate up beyond the, the typical 7 or 8% to 31%. And also finally um, ensuring that they're actually buying into the system of capital gains and investment, they're going to actually make it. Doesn't mean that it's going to uh, work holistically on the macro level. But if you want to process this for yourself, it's definitely possible to actually reach some form of parity. Okay. Well, I like to put numbers on things, right? So if someone is making, I don't know, $50,000 now, they should be looking to make 8% more a year. Correct, Lawrence? Generally, yes. Because right now we have, especially in the, I guess, the Black community, the, the census um, data dropped and also the BLS data dropped. I think the Black household is bringing in um, closer to like $55,000 in comparison to like maybe the Asian households bringing in 108, the median Asian household and the white household is bringing about 80, but the real median for all Americans is around like 75,000. I think that's, that's, the, that's the problem. Our income gap is a problem. That means we need to be making money, as much as money as possible to bring in, to so bring in our household into um, that level of parity. Right, so if the average black household is making roughly fifty-five thousand, and yeah, increase is about yeah, it's a little less than that. Yeah, yeah, the reason I know yeah but less let's, than that let's, is, let's round it off because we can get you know, lost. The, in the the point I'm saying that it's the point I'm saying that because we look at the Asian household, they literally doubled us up, and that's Dude, and that's how uh, I know that they made one hundred eight and they made more than double of what we. Yeah. I, well, I'm, I'm not going to say what I was thinking, but um, uh, 
let's say, let's still, let's stick with 50,000 or 55,000. That's $4,400. So they should be trying to make about $60,000. And out of that $60,000, you said save 31%. Yeah, thirty one percent of that. So, so for every dollar you make, you should be probably saving around 30, 30 cents, thirty one cents. Anything like, like right, so it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be every, every dollar. You, every dollar you make, you, yeah. If every dollar you make, you should be saving at least thirty one um, cents of it. That's what it is. So if you're not saving at all, because the average American household, let's just say all across, you know, the median American household is saving around like eight grand a year. That's really not a lot. That's right. So while they're, you know, I guess the other people are sleeping on the game, you need to be doing the opposite, meaning that you save as much as possible wherever you can. That mm -hmm. means we understand what cash flow is. That means we understand what it maybe even moving in together, in-laws move in together, whatever it is, or even friends or even fraternity sorority members move in together to save on costs wherever we can. So we could invest more and actually do more with whatever we have. Go ahead and get into a polyamorous relationship with like 10 people. Oh, shoot. Oh, polyamorous out here. Hey, I ain't saying none of that. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that's my practice, but hey, I'm just hey, hey, hey. a joke. It's a hard thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> Mathematically, that makes sense. But how probable is it, right? It um, is probable. It's probable for it? anybody that wants to do it. Because at the end of the day, everything that we do in life, it comes down to the choices that we want to make. It can be probable for us. The person I say they, that they can't is just as equally valid as the person that says that they can't. So, so I'm not saying that anyone says they can't, right? Um, and again, I'm just speaking from my work, my work in the community, seeing what people actually have to do. A lot of our people have to uh, pay their money backwards, right? So within our community, um, there's a lot of people that have to take care of parents, um, aunts, uncles, or whatever. So their money is actually going the opposite way. It's not flowing down. It's flowing backwards, right? Mm -hmm. That's the thing within our community. Um, so when you talk about making 8% more, the math makes sense, but that's why I talked about how probable it is. Now you're talking about possibly having to make um, changes such as moving in with other folks or picking up a side hustle. A side, that, that's all fine, but you're talking about consistently adding 8% per year. Um Again, the math makes sense, but how probable is it? This is why I think that um, the conclusion in terms of just making more money and saving at a higher rate Not enough. sounds good, but I think there is a piece missing, right? And the piece missing is how do we actually get more income when we have the issue with student loans, right? Um, to the point Liz was making earlier when we were talking offline about where are these jobs that are going to continuously pay us at this right. higher rate? I think that it comes down to, and Kamari, um, you know, you know, you've heard me say this a gazillion times. The reason why I think that black love and culture matter are because that's part of how you get in spaces and pull other people in spaces where that income can then be increased. Um, Multi generational living, right? That that's so that that article right there is written by this genius guy who's on this panel by the name of Kamari Ellis, but. To, to Lawrence's point, right, I think you have to make different choices. And so mm -hmm. I pull up multi-generational living because 50 years ago, 70 years ago, Nana and Grandma, they were all living in the house now. We can make the the the, the challenge of, well, whose house can could sustain that now? Maybe, but maybe there's a chance or an opportunity to move and create accommodation for that. But Jimmy, I agree with you as well, right? Right now it might not happen, but what are we going to do? We have to make changes going forward because as Dr. Anderson says, <laughs> we're mental midgets, right? True, but there's also like, so like, I was reading a book earlier and I'm pretty sure lot, some of you guys have read it, Um, The Color of Money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And in The Color of Money, she makes a point. She says that when you look at the data and I haven't pulled up the study she cited, she said, in our community, um, the people that have least amount actually have higher savings rates. She said, so it's not a matter of these people aren't saving and they're not and, and doing what they have to do. It's a matter of resources. They don't have enough, right? Which goes to a lot of different factors, whether we're talking about education or whatever it may be. And a lot of times we talk from our bubbles, right? So, you know, a lot of us, the people around us may make six figures. They may be savers. They may be investors. But when you get out of your bubble and you start talking to folks out here hurting, mm -hmm. folks are out here hurting. They're behind on their car note. They're getting ready to get evicted. They're behind on their mortgage. Like this is a reality of what's happening out here. And again, I even have to, of course, correct myself sometimes and say, I got to get out of my bubble because my friends are doing well out here. 
But when when I go outside my bubble, it's not the same. It's hunger it's, game. It's, it's not the same. It's hunger game. People are not even having a conversation about investing. They want to know where their meal is coming from. How to keep the lights on, how to make sure there's running water, how am I gonna feed the kid and clothe the kid for the next day? And I'm saying it as a lender because I get to see everything as a lender. That is the one thing that I, I'm grateful for and also very disturbed by at the same time. I work with a, a spectrum of clients on the income scale. And so when I have clients who are hungry for home ownership and I have to give them that the, deal them the, the 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 very bitter pill that hey, we're gonna have to come up with a different game plan because you're just not financially in the space to buy a home and not be house poor the minute you get into the home. And that's one part of the spectrum. And then there's my talent to 10th spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. um, where they got the education and the school loan debt and they have the careers that match the school debt and they're fine because they get to leverage certain things because they are seen as, as a, of having a job and a status in life where they're always gonna be making money. So even when you separate it out, Liz, you know. Let me ask you this right. question. Let me ask you this question, Liz. So. You deal with this a lot. Mm -hmm. So everybody shouldn't own a home? Mm. Every family should own a home. I, I'm going to, I want to answer that, but I'm being mindful because I know where Kamari is going with this. So, so I'm going to, so I'm going to say everybody should own a home yes. and I'm going to give you a very good example of why it's, it, it changes the game. And I'm going to, my example is going to be international. Um, when you go to, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Everybody has a home. They have a house. It may not be in the best repair. It may have a hole in the ceiling, hole in the wall, something. Everybody ha owns a property. Everybody. It is not until they immigrate here that they may find themselves in a the place to be without a roof over their head. And that is a predominantly, that is a Black island, a Black country. And so, yes, everyone should own a home because it completely changes the way in which you can leverage yourself and your life and secure your family so no everyone should own a home all right so i'll play devil's advocate and just say it's up to the math but i wanted to add something to mm -hmm. to to what liz said because it's almost like we're operating the same spaces right because i have those quote-unquote talented 10th friends but i'm also seeing what the people outside are actually dealing with and one of the things that hurts my heart is a lot of my friends who come from those spaces who've actually achieved that level of education and income they start to act as if they're different and and not really have any empathy for those that aren't where they need to be. Um, and that's something that, you know, I struggle with, like trying to get them to see, like, you know, all of us have a certain level of privilege, right? We, we, whatever it may be. Um, but we have to understand and get out of our bubbles and see what people are really dealing with. We're talking about, you know, starting from 50 and making 8% more. Um, where's that actually going to come from? Especially when we see what's coming down the line right now exactly. in our current economy. Exactly. Yeah, I would say this. Uh, let me clar let me clarify this thing about this eight percent. It's annualized average eight percent. It doesn't mean that every year you get eight percent. It okay. means that over the the time, your trajectory should be of growth. And I think this is what our, part of our problem is when we're reading these things and we're getting this information and we're getting this recommendation or advice. We almost like, no, no, it's not going to work. I'm like, but you never even tried. You know, you never even, you know, did it. You never even thought it through as far as maybe there is a possibility that, hey, maybe my current job is not giving me the um, the upgrades that I need. Maybe I pick up an extra job on the weekends where I can make a little bit more money in the household because you guys are bringing up great information. Like I grew up in a household that we didn't we just didn't make a lot. My, my mom retired and I think the highest she ever made. And I looked at her Social Security uh, stubs was like 30K a year. So I know exactly what you're talking about. I've lived through it. But yet you have to remember that we all have decisions to make. Some people I'm like, you could, I'm like, how are you broke and you have four kids? You probably should have stopped at the one. No, nah, you're and the third. And then you realize, then you turn around and be like, oh my God, I'm broke at, at four kids. I'm like, well, you were broke before even the one to one. Like we have to be almost honest and oh, not necessarily critical of people, but we have to like put the challenge in front of them and say, we have to make actual changes. So it's no, not just the really, income. I it's also the saving structure. But, it's also the investing. I just, just want to say these all all the these different pieces all the that could really help. Just a little bit. But we have, I, to be, we have to be honest about how people get there too, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff is bred through poverty. And a lot of that poverty, we, we tend to just put decisions on people. You made this decision and this is why you're suffering. Well, a lot of times that's not the case, right? That was the only choice. So, so we have to, we, we can be honest. We can, we can be critical. 
but we also have to have empathy. We can't just move in with a, a hard line and say, you got to do this and you got to do that. In Philadelphia, when the pandemic hit, we realized that almost half of our citizens didn't even have internet. We're talking about like, they don't even have access to the information, which is funny because a lot of these studies and things that we see online, when you're in the streets, people don't even know what you're talking about because they're not online because they don't even have internet access, right? Um, and it was a great article. It was written by, uh, what's the brother's name, um, out of Baltimore. And he wrote an article about that, um, about how oh, in Baltimore. Not, no, no. Um, what's the brother's name? He works for, I think he's like the editor of the salon. Um, but to make a long story short, uh, D. Watkins. D. Watkins wrote an article about that about how in Baltimore, you know, we, we tend to have these economic conversations online a lot of times. He was like, when you go to the streets of Baltimore, they don't even know what you're talking about because they don't even have the internet. They don't even, they're not on Twitter. They're not on any of these things, but this is a reality. And, and, and then we talk about the census. A lot of our folks that are struggling like that, they ain't a part of that. They're just not a part of it. Like, so when you get outside and in the streets and you're talking to real people, the people that um, are a part of our community and the fabric of what, what um, our culture and our communities look like, this is a whole different story. I get that there are a lot of us that can take action and, and make changes. Because again, like Liz said, I have those friends, but I also got the other folks I deal with. It's a whole different story. That's all it's I'm saying. Then it's focus on the ones you can help, though. So it's, no, and, 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 it. like, it's, it's two parts. It's two parts. And there's the actual person that's really struggling at a different level, like different socio macro level that they, they just need a, a, a lot more hand to hand approach. But there is to 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 this point, And a lot of people brought it up. There is a whole bunch of, quote unquote, the talented 10th that are digging themselves into a debt poverty um, um, location based off the amount of money they're making and the, the lifestyle that they're living. That's the challenge. Like we can't, it's almost like, yes, there's a lot, there's a lot of people that we should show a lot of empathy for, but there's also a lot of other people that just kind of, they're messing this thing up and we have to call it out and we have to help them. We have to teach them. We have to be critical about the things that we're doing. Cause I remember even buying this home in PG County, Washington, DC, oh. where I purchased it, it was a, like a, this condo, two bed, two bath. I purchased it was the rich rack folks. I, I, I purchased it for one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. That's how how much I purchased it back in twenty sixteen, the end of twenty sixteen. Was a good time. That and was I was like, time. oh shoot! I told all my other quote unquote talented friends, you know, people like, yo, you might want to buy around here. There's one twenty, one twenty, one one eighteen over here. There's one thirty over there. Buy in this area where it's all black, anyways. They're like, nah, I want to be where it's happening. I want to be in the hot spot. I want to be where where the cool kids are, whatever that is. They stayed in, in D.C. proper, in the center of D.C., paying at least now they're paying around like, what, two thousand to almost three grand per month. That is a choice. That is a wild choice because they, they decided that that was more important for them. Lifestyle, prestige, the look, the ambiance, the open entertainment, the catering, all of that was more important to them. So they end up being broke for We got to oh. call that out. We got to. I, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not arguing. Out. I'm not well, arguing with that. Tree Custer, like there's some people oh, like I'm oh, no, no, poor, no, no, no. but then they end up at the Beyonce concert. Listen, I, hold on, hold on, hold on, I, I am a DMV native on, and I understand on, exactly on. what you're talking about. Oh, sorry. Come on. Very good. New here, you're watching the Finance Rebel Show. We are on every Wednesday, eight o'clock. If you have not liked, if you have not shared, please do so and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy this content, your subscription, your like will help more people find this content as well. Go ahead, Liz. Please keep cooking. So I, I'm a DMV native, and there is absolutely a, a uh, epidemic amongst Black folk of the Talented Tenth, and some who are even, you know, in the in between, who want to be in the scene, want to want to be where everything's happening for connection reasons, for business reasons. But you know, we're also kind of neglecting some of the trauma that a lot of the Talented Tenth came from, because a lot of them came from the same spaces mm -hmm. that we see people in. And sometimes, not saying it's right or wrong, it, it can be a struggle in your finances. You don't want to be in the same environment that took you out or damn near took you out or took out your uncle or took out your, aunt, or took out your cousins or continues to bring up the PTSD that you have. Um, and I'm going to say this because I have this conversation a lot. I'm not I'm not from Philly. My running uh, tagline is honorary John. That's what I call myself. My homegirl called me. And I say that. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I say that from a space of I see so much potential in Philly. But when I talk to Philly natives. They don't see it. They're like, why are you here? You should be back in the DMV because that's where it's at. That's where you can really do the, do the business. That's where you can really do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, because in Philly, Philly's like a home-cooked meal to me. 
it's like coming home. Mm. I know I can still, I know I can build real relationships here where the DMV is very transitory and PG County is very bougie, even though I'm from PG County. <laughs> say what you want, say what you want. Um, but I know where I grew up and I knew where I had to survive and I knew where I got to. It's but, only entertainment. Um, but the point is, most people don't want to go back to those spaces because of what's associated with it and the trauma that they dealt with. And so we have to figure out how to manage that trauma in order to not overextend ourselves financially and then put us back in a space of being house poor or rich and broke. No, I mean, my part of the story talks about all the time, he calls it a ge geographic trauma. Like a lot of times mm -hmm. what, we're, what we see in those, um, those specific neighborhoods is not what someone who's not from there sees, right? So that's, that's just a, that's a part of it, right? Um, man, it's, it's such a it's such a nuanced conversation because it's very nuanced. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying, Lawrence. There are people that um, live above their means. I mean, it's, that's just part of America, right? <laughs> if you look at the, the, the look at the statistics on uh, credit card debt, everybody out here frauding, right? So people, hey man, get that business credit, get that fifty thousand, yeah, hundred thousand. You know, Start the look, LLC, run the play. Yeah, no, no, it's not business credit. It's it's funding. You missed it, Jimmy. It I know. <laughs> no, 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 I get the business credit thing, but what I'm saying is that's what they call it. They don't call it business credit. They said you got to get your no. business funding. It's all bullshit. It's yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they elevate the language, though. It's not business credit. Yeah. It's business yeah, it's funding. funding. It's, it's, it's not even, yeah, it's not even uh, business. It's funding for anything that they're trying to do. Yeah, that's you gotta, what it is. You gotta get Pay the funding. bills. I don't know. <laughs> like it's funny because broke is still broke no matter how you look at it. Over, <laughs> lever over leverage is still over leverage no matter how you look at it. These right. are the facts. Kamari in the private chat actually dropped the article I was speaking of. It's the brother D. Watkins, um, who's an amazing writer, by the way. Mm -hmm. I read a couple of his books. Um, phenomenal writer. But the article that really put him on the map is that one. It's called Too Poor for Pop Culture. Um, you yeah. know, I, I just gave it to you for you to read later. But what he talks about is um, how, you know, the census and things take these data. But a lot of folks that are in our communities, they're not a part of it. They're struggling. They don't Listen, have, this they is have, real talk. My mother wouldn't allow me to fill out the census. So when people talk about mm -hmm. these stats, I think about the same thing. Black people, since I, as far as I know, have always had this anti-government type relationship. And you <laughs> see it in everything. Right? You see it in everything. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's with reason. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Totally get it. Because there's always some screw up. There's always some Oh, this person just got locked up today. Like, I just learned recently that ambulance systems basically started, or EMS, emergency medical systems, started in Pittsburgh, in the Hill District. Why did it start? It started because the police would come anytime there was an emergency. And when they would take Black people, they would treat them very poorly, transporting them to the hospital. So, again, I get it. So, paramedics basically came about because of the mistreatment of black people. So that's that's documented evidence right there. That's our history. And that's what we have to deal with. And then we wonder why sometimes our response is to just trick out on life because we have very <laughs> deep, we have very deeply rooted trauma. I'm sorry. Like some of the stuff you can't even see. It's just it's just no, it is. but that's why that's why um another so part instead of I money for reparations, maybe we should just get all lifetime therapy. No, 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 give me no, lifetime no, therapy. No, no, therapy. I, know, I, know, I, don't, I don't know whether you're joking or not with that, Kamari, but oh, yeah. I do believe I do believe that mental health has to be a part of that answer, including with the more income and the assets. Mm -hmm. Um, because again, sometimes I'm outside talking to folks and they, they straight will tell me, like, especially the young boys, when I and I when I speak no, to you, no what D hold on, Jimmy. No what DC. They, they I'm not making it 30. They're like, you're trying to tell me to save money. I don't even plan on being alive in the next They're not, five years. They didn't think they were going to make it till 21. Yeah, so it's like... Yeah, we were told that for um, like uh, the high school teachers, the principals, the, the vice principals. Like, yeah, right, you ain't so going to make on. it. Hold on, y'all. I, I do want to talk about this, right? Oh, no, no, so, no, no. We need mental health too, GC. Yeah, so GC, we I, I we totally need disagree. Therapy I, don't and know, I don't know if you're joking or if you're serious. Yes, we do need the money, but guess what? The better our brains and our emotions and our psychology work, the more money we'll be able to make a lot well, of not only that, if you give us the money and we don't have we don't have the right mind frame it don't matter that you give us the money exactly i, I, I couldn't get there huh you just had to jump me go ahead go ahead jimmy go no i'm just saying like this is a realization i've had recently like not recently i said over the last several years because and i've talked to you about this how i used to always think that everything's economics economics but it's not 
the more, the the more life around. experience I have and the more people I'm able to sit down and talk to and really see what their issues are, because I've talked to people that have literally come across a million dollars in lawsuits and are broke. Um, but, but can we take a minute? Can we take a minute? I said, minute. Can we take yes, a minute sir. and talk about what wealth really is? Because well, most people it? think wealth is only money, and it is mm-hmm. not. No, it's wealth not. Wealth is how money. It's health, right? Your environments. Oh, black environments. Jimmy just talked about it. They're all jacked up, right? So we're not even talking about that. So we're just talking about if your mind is not right, what can you do effectively at the top level? I bet if everybody got therapy, every black person got therapy, I bet on average you would see a 10 to 20% income rate probably within a 10-year span. I think that's savings rate would get that's higher. A guess. I think, and yes, I, yes. I believe that. I really believe that, right? So I believe that a lot of the issues that we talk about are really mental health issues and not financial issues, right? Um, I agree with that. Oh, great. It's addiction. Hold on, hold on. I agree with Jimmy. You I'm, I'm the only one disagreeing with that. All right, I, Lawrence, yeah. Lawrence, why? Tell us why. Come on. I'll, I'll say this. Uh, cause I think I've seen it online, especially in this day and age for the millennials and Gen Z. It's all about empathy, therapy, and financial trauma that's passed over through your DNA for some reason. I'm like, I'm not, I don't think that's even science. I it's think at the end of the day, I think a lot of people need to start small. And to your point, a lot of people are hungry. A lot of people are stressed out because of the space they don't live in. The, the, what if I think money comes... I think on, money... But, Hold on, what? what if emotionally you can't even rationalize what's wrong? I know that. And that's that's very much the way that we're trying to solve this problem. If if I were to solve this grand problem with black people, I would actually start small and making sure that one, the, the people that do have the means get financially squared away, financially fluent. We cannot afford the people that are making the most in our community to be also the ones, you know, I guess, spending the most and getting more and more debt because they have issues. Definitely need to sort that that one out. The second point of that would be from those people, now that they are healthy, well, and, and, and financially savvy enough, we could now source money from them to actually start to help out people in the lower rung, lower rung being the people that are struggling with, you know, the type of therapy that we need and the holistic idea to get people back to work. I think I when do. you get people back to work, you saw so you start solving and unwrap and unraveling this problem that we have in the black community globally, where we need black men and black women back actively producing in order to go back to their house. From their house, that that therapy and mental health piece always kind of um, goes into play. The more and more we have communication, healthy dialogue creates better communities because there is years that the, the black community even the world have done years without therapy for some reason and and they actually survived i don't know i think I therapy know, well, survival, survival is different I mean, one at a time one at a time on, jimmy. survival um, is different hold on jimmy survival. we're gonna go to liz first she was talking first go to go ahead, liz. go with the money all right I, so i want to when you get to a global aspect of things we got to be really careful about this one because colonization has done a number on the globe particularly spaces that are not fully dominated by um, American culture. But I also want to be clear that most of those communities globally that we're talking about for black and brown people have always consistently worked. And one, and some of the most, and some of the most really terrible jobs, including mining. And there's a lot of issues still happening in the Congo right now. I just want to make sure we're clear. So it's not that people aren't working and mental health is an issue globally speaking because of all of the trauma around how you rear your children. So I just, I just want to leave that there. Um, and then when we talk about, you know, the millennials and the zennials and all, and, and all of them, the Gen Zers and their focus on how generational trauma around money and what is passed on genetically. And when I mentioned that about epigenetics, that is exactly what epigenetics talks about. The passing on of gene mod- of gene changes based on environment and trauma. That goes on to your the later generations. The reason why we have higher issues of blood of blood pressure, cholesterol, all of those um very significant health issues for black people has to do with just slavery and history and diet and trauma passed on for survival because our bodies adapted to traumatic spaces to survive. So that is not just on a physical level, but a mental and emotional level as well. So we have to be really careful about how we say just getting back to work and making money is going to be a solution. Because unfortunately, as I said before, we have alabaster counterparts who've always had money. And they're they're mentally screwed just based on their epigenetics of being descendants of colonizers and oppressors and um, mass murderers. 
So I just want to add, like you, you were saying that, like, we you know, we've been able to like survive this long, but surviving versus thriving are two different things. Mm-hmm. So I think that has to be pointed out for one. And for two, when I'm speaking about mental health, a lot of those people that um, you're speaking of that have the income, that have the assets, um, but who are kind of, for lack of a better term, tricking it off, that goes to mental health as well, right? When people are spending this money on frivolous things, what are they actually trying to do when they spend this money? They're chasing something. Right. That's the mental health part. So even if we talk about the folks that actually have the income that are just blowing that income and not not investing, not doing these things, what is it they're spending money on and why are they spending it? That's the part of the mental health um, that I was talking about. And also, I've never seen trickle down um, economics work anywhere. So I don't even know whether that's the answer in terms of helping our higher income folks and them being able to give back to the folks that don't have. I just don't know of any point in history where that trickle down thing has worked. All right, so real quick, hold on, let's get to the comments. I don't want to ignore it, anybody. DC's been over there getting busy. By the way, Jose is in the building. Shout out to Jose. And my man Conrad's in the building. So, Conrad. So, Conrad, you said that's literally science. I'm not which I'm not sure at what point um you jumped in at. It ain't science. All right, so how science works, but okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, so are you familiar with well, hold on. Epigen- hold on. Epigenetics hold on. is just like a, a theory. Wait a minute. I'm gonna real, start. Like I'm gonna start. Science. I'm gonna start beating y'all mics. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. <laughs> Play nice. Play nice. Now, are, is anybody familiar with the work of Doctor DeGroote? Post slavery traumatic traumatic syndrome. Yes. Post. Yeah. Post traumatic slave disorder. So she's kind of proven a lot of this. So I would say many of these things, and then Liz just brought in the medical term epigenetics. And so I think there is something to that, whether we're all familiar with it or not, is a different question. Um, but Lawrence, why do you say it doesn't work? Real quick. Well, it's one of those seconds. things that, you know, one, I haven't done the, the research on it, so I'm not really the person to be like, oh, I, I read this person's word on it. Nope. Based on the way that I study science, that that's not how it worked out. Uh, it's something that you said about, hey, we have high history of uh, blood pressure or so on and so forth. I'm like, that's because of our diet. Yeah, the slave diet was very um, unhealthy. It doesn't mean that your current diet needs to be unhealthy. That means you need to cut that out. That's why you find that in the uh, state of Mississippi, it has the highest degree of that kind of like uh, chronic heart conditions. Because if you ever ate in the Mississippi, man, they are loaded full of grease. It's crazy. So we have to get away from some of the diets and things that we used to eat in the past that's not going to uh, amount to any co- something constructive in our health in the future. And I don't think that has to do with your your it, DNA it, per se. It, it has to do with good. the way that you're eating today. That's your just biology. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, Liz. I got you. I got you. I know where you're going. So, Liz, real quick, mm-hmm. tell everyone what your background is. How do oh. we get from medicine to mortgages? Uh, so I have a bachelor's in pre-med, uh, bachelor's psych pre-med. That is from Hopkins, Johns Hopkins. I have a master's in biomedical sciences. That is from UND and J, which is now Rutgers University. I did two years of medical school. All right. So this isn't really coming from an uninformed person. Yeah. That's regular, guy. So, regular guy. Regular no, guy. And, and that's no judgment. Um, and I'm sorry, come on, I didn't mean to cut you off. I don't feel judged. No, no, no. I'm just a regular guy. I just, I just like, um, and and while I haven't been in practice in quite some time, some time in regards to my studies, I definitely have enough in my circle to keep me up to date. And I do this just for fun at this point. But um, while diet definitely plays a part, uh, I'm four years vegan at this point. There are also certain things I'm still already predisposed to just based on genetic history. So if we're talking about the genes that were passed down from my grandparents, my great grandparents, based on their trauma and adaptations, there are certain things I can correct for. But we're still like when I have children, if I should have children because I've made different decisions, hopefully that will improve their genetic outcomes. But epigenetics plays a very major part in our lineage just based on the history and the slavery diets. Yes, we we need to make different health changes currently to offset that, to offset now, genetics. Do we agree? So we agree. We agree there, but you said that, that, that the history on. had nothing to Regular do with the Regular guy it. agrees with the medical person. <laughs> All right, so do me a favor. Like so y'all, y'all, y'all are not y'all not being good guys. Now, I used to study science me, until my mom kind of like maybe. Hold on, hold on. Science. Liz, do me a favor. Can you break down exactly what epigenetics means? I will for everyone? do so, and I like to do so because I, I made sure to pull it up. So I give you the exact definition All so right. that everybody has it, okay? Yes, ma'am. 
Epigenetics, the study of changes in organisms caused by modification of gene expression rather than alteration of the gene code itself. I mean, we're not looking at full mutations. And when you have a modification of gene expression, it means that there may be environmental changes that cause you to do something in adaptation, right? Say if you don't have a lot of sun for a couple hundred years, your melanin is going to become paler, just an example. So even though you may have melanin cells, they stop producing melanin at the same rate. That is an epigenetic ad adaptation or change. Hope that helped. Now, so can you give us a different, not a different, but another regular guy, regular gal example of how epigenetics can come into play and, and affect someone's high blood pressure? Oh, cool. Um, let's look at this way. So the genes children inherit from their biological parents provide information about their guts, about development. So if, let's just say um, Native Americans, because they're at the bottom of every uh, socioeconomic percentage or scale or whatever you want to call it. Um, they at one point lived up the land, had very different healthy health outcomes. They now due to where they've been forced into reservations and strategically removed from resources and being able to live off the land as they have generationally now have a higher predisposition for diabetes due to increase of processed food, and they also have a higher disposition for alcoholism. So at one point, you're talking about a, a group of people who lived off the land healthily, lived with imbalance with the land because it was deeply spiritual to them due to um, being colonized and due to some racism and laws put into place. They now are at the top of the statistics for negative health outcomes. Does that help? Did that is that a better layman's term example for you? Yeah, that, that helps. But so it, it, epigenetic, epigenetics doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get high blood pressure or you're going to get diabetes, but yeah. the probabilities are higher, especially if you exhibit certain behaviors. Is that if you are exposed to certain environments that restrict your ability, I'll put it this way. If if you are exposed to certain environments and trauma that cause your body to adapt in a certain way, that can lead to those health outcomes. So if you no longer have access, if who's the guy who did the whole McDonald's thing? Do you remember? Yeah, remember. Right? That was I know yeah, it was about super, diet super and food. Super size it. I know super dumb about diet and food, but if oh if, yes, but if his own if his if your environment only has one thing. And that is all you're exposed to, whether it's violence, drugs, bad food for you. Your body is then going to start taking on some of those genetic markers to adapt to, okay, in order for me to sustain healthy blood pressure, I have to adjust how you pump all the sodium in and out of your body. If all you have is poor food, then, hey, this is how your body's going to adjust. And the reason why epigenetics comes into play is because if you do that long enough and then you have children, your children, even if they never got a, a bit of that diet they now have inherited the way your body has adapted to it. Does that make sense? And that's why epigenetics is kind of the conversation. I really hope I'm trying, I'm trying so, to explain. So basically this is why a kid is big boned because their their parents were big boned. This is where it gets a little bit of a You're never big boned. But if I move from Antarctica to Africa in a warmer climate, my body is going to adjust according to the warmer climate. While I may struggle and make those adjustments, the minute I have children, my children are going to have the adaptations or the genetic needs met to be in a warmer climate. That's it's just it's it's the way in which you. It, it, that's the most simple example I can give you. Take somebody out of Antarctica, drop them in Hawaii, and watch how they have to adapt to the temperature modifications, and then watch their children not have those same struggles because they have to survive in that environment. If you snatch the children yeah. out of that environment from Hawaii and drop them I in just, Antarctica, I, just, I, I have, have to look. Oh, hold on, hold on, everybody. <laughs> I don't agree with it at all. Hold on, hold on, everybody. All. I'm doing my best. Hold on, listen, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching and listening to the Finance Pro Show. The Finance Rebel Show is all about how to make wealth black again, right? And it's not just about money. There's a lot of things that black people have to do in the pursuits of wealth and money and riches. So we like to talk about all these things because it's a holistic thing. It's not just a money thing. Mm -hmm. I, I was just saying that environment is so important, right? This the, the bootstrap mentality is, is all well and good, but when you talk about environment, we have to take that into consideration. 
if I go down and 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 and, and tell um a young man, you know, from Strawberry Mansion, like, yo, these are the things you have to do. They're going to be like, listen, man, and this is something that I do and I've heard. I am trying to survive. I'm trying to eat. I am trying to put like, a, you know, put some, make sure the water's on in my house. So it's, we have to take environment into consideration and understand what the environment is. Now, I understand Lawrence's point about focusing on those that have the income, that have the resources, but the problem is the reason, and, and it, again, I can only give you my experience. The trickle down part doesn't work are because a lot of us have a lack of empathy. A lot of us have a lack of understanding. And a lot of us, to be honest with you, we talk that good talk about wanting our people to be better. But in my experience, a lot of us, we actually want to be the colonizer. Right. We we, we want to be the oppressor. So that's the problem that I see. And, and, and again, I'm someone who supports HBCUs. I'm a product of HBCUs. A lot of my HBCUs, brothers and sisters, y'all just be y'all. Y'all want to be the oppressor. That's and, and that's problematic. So. Y'all, y'all have these incomes, you build this wealth, you become millionaires, multimillionaires, and a lot of us turn our backs on our folks, right? Because we don't have empathy, we don't have understanding, and we we look as if um we're somewhat different, right? I ain't like them. So hold that right there, Janine. Oh, yeah. I want I want a Akira 34 through this. Yeah, thank you, girl. <laughs> the adaptation to malaria was sick of some, right? So if we're talking about epigenetics, this is probably the yep. best example you can think about because thank God. Black folks in Africa, right? If you think about this, I know some of y'all don't like talking about Africa, but that's a whole other conversation. But in Africa, yeah, black yeah. folks typically developed a sickle cell gene to fight off malaria. We saw the reason why Africa wasn't totally decimated. If you look at a, a book called Guns, Germs, and Steel, mm -hmm. the germs were the malaria part. White folks, European, the alabaster folks could not adapt to to the malaria and so that's a perfect example of this and environment absolutely matters y'all environment absolutely matters go ahead jimmy i want to say i just i just want to um just put that part out there that's the problem with the trickle down in my experience and why it doesn't tend to work um and i can even speak to philadelphia specifically like it's a lot of folks from philadelphia making a lot of a lot of money and a lot of them don't do anything for those or try to like lend a hand or or do anything to pick up those that don't um, you know, when I'm out there, I see the same faces and then, you know, shot to Kamari because Kamari does, you know, hit the streets and, and help, but I'm just saying it's the same faces. So I'm inside, I just, man. I'm I, I just, I just, this. I just think that, um, we have to be, we have to be honest with ourselves in terms of where we have to correct course, correct some of our behavior, but we also have to be honest with ourselves in terms of how we love and how we support each other. Because to me, there is no black wealth without black love. Black wealth doesn't exist without black love. I agree and with I that. Think that is part of the problem is we're not focusing on that. We have a lot of healing to do, um, as well as building the assets, as well as protecting the credit and dealing with the debt. We have a lot of healing to do in terms of how we see each other, like, you know, in terms of seeing each other as brothers and sisters. That's to me, is part of our overall problem. Go ahead, Lawrence. I heard you, brother. What, yeah. what, what yeah, you got? Two parts. For one, I think part of the problem that I have with, I guess, the way that we're going about almost uh, medically inducing ourselves or saying different words. And to your point, maybe there is uh, something to be said about epigenetics. But I've also noticed a lot of uh, very certified or the the, the talented test start saying that, hey, the reason they don't save is because some way, somehow my great grandfather didn't save or my great grandfather didn't invest. So therefore, I don't invest. And I think that's a little bit foolish. I think we do need to go a little bit beyond. Come on, man. You know everybody's got I, 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 I literally heard this thing. I was like, it was the wildest thing I ever heard. I, I stopped mid-run. I was doing like a three-mile run. I was like, the heck is this goofy stuff? It was very odd, and I, I find that to be traumatic. And, and to your point, Jimmy, yeah, I don't think overall we just going to have a great global mandate for Black people to do a trickle-down economics. It's just not going to really work that way. But my idea is that we're creating more people that have more empathy like you, hopefully. And maybe out of a certain percentage of the people you create, there are very few that go back and give back. Because I think part of you, the way that your story is, Jimmy, is that you had to become a full whole person before you start impacting the lives of other people. And I think that's what we need to remember that as we change and as we develop, as we grow into better people, that's the only way that we could look back and really go back into these communities that we're from directly and impact them. That's what I used to go through Miami. Like I, I go to the classroom and the teachers tell me, well, well, be careful. These kids going to be kind of crazy. Five minutes in, the kids are cool with me. Why? Because I'm from I even tell them straight up. I'm, I'm, I used to sit right there in the same class. You know, you sitting there. And that's, at, at that one instant point, they're like, oh, it's cool. Let's have a conversation. 
So there is a way that we could do something, but I think we, we have to induce and make other people that are already in the position to be closer to being financially free or finally mentally free from the stress and the trauma. So they could also become a cadre of people that goes and give back. I think that's what we need. We need more Jimmy's, but we can't do that. If we're just focusing on, no, I don't, I, so I don't, I don't, agree, I, I don't disagree with you. Right. But I think that we have to be careful when we get the, we have to make sure we take the right people and put them in position. Right. Um, I'm not, but wait a minute, before we go too far down the road. Right. But isn't to, to you, Lawrence, isn't the goal to become whole? Right. I mean, we need more Jimmy's, but sure. But we need more long. Well, absolutely. And I, yeah, yeah, we, we need, need more, we need everybody. We need definitely everybody. Right. Here. So then, so then, then there really isn't a pushback to mental health. And I'm not talking, and I want to be clear too. I do believe, and this is just my feelings here, right? There are some people that are milking the mental health count. It's like people milk everything else, right? Absolutely. However, to monetize the hell out of this financial trauma stuff nowadays. No, absolutely. Yeah, but mean, guess what? Well, hold on, Jimmy. Hold on. But guess what? People exploit things all the time. That's just human. That's human nature. That's human dynamics. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not real, right? You can watch, you can watch, and I hope I don't get in trouble for this. You can watch plenty of documentaries on Susan G. Coleman and their foundation and how they're not necessarily the best thing for cancer. But that doesn't mean cancer's not real, right? So we got to be sure not to co-mingle and make some dismiss stuff just because of the work of some people. Because if that was the case, there's so many goddamn scammers out here right now. They shouldn't believe nothing that we believe on this panel tonight. But so, that, um, and I, I agree with this. I was just going to say that there has to be equal part of reaching back as you move forward. Um, and it's something that, you know, we, I called it in our sorority fortitude. It's a thing as you move forward, you have to reach back, but we also have to be okay with like not agreeing with each other. I think everybody sometimes can't should, go. I, I, so everybody, so everybody can't go cause everybody's not ready. That's right. one part of it. Um, but you, and everybody doesn't want to go. Some people yeah. just don't. I, I'm just going to say everybody's not ready. I'm not yeah. going to say that people don't want to. They're just not ready. And that, that's just really what it is. Some, you know, you can't eat raw cookie dough and expect it to taste good, right? It's got to be cooked. It's got to be together. It's got to be ready to eat. But I'm going to say that we also have to be okay with not agreeing with each other and still wanting to help each other. Because I also think a lot of it is ego sometimes that comes into play, especially amongst the child's defense. <laughs> Everybody done got the degrees. Everybody think they know better than everybody else. Like you can't have discourse anymore and di and disagree and still say, you know what? But hey, me and Lawrence have to grant everything. But if Lawrence needs something and I got the resources, yo, let me know. I got you covered. Because I know that me providing those resources could be the difference between you being able to move forward or benefiting somebody else in the community rather than me holding on to those resources because I don't agree with everything about your life. All right, well, hold on, y'all. I got two more loonies. All right, so shout out to Dwight. And he asked the question, so Supercats get a priority. How do we treat inflation in an 8% increase? I would say, and I would love to hear what everybody on the panel has to say about this, I would say you have to increase your skills. Whether it's school, whether it's there's so many things online right now where you can learn coding or many, many other things. I know some people don't want to do it, but there are literally ways to increase I think that's probably one of the best ways to do that in this 8% or in this inflationary environment. Rent a school. <laughs> no, <I'm joking>. no. <laughs> I don't know if the white got that one. That's a that's an old Martin, Martin Lawrence <laughs> comment. <laughs> all right, but no, but 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 all jokes aside though, um, I agree with you, Kamari. It, it is about um increasing your value in the marketplace mm -hmm. or the way you put it. Um, to increase your skills. Like to me, that is the best investment you can make um, is to increase your skill set or your value in the overall market. That's why I think that even, you know, earlier we were having a conversation about how to treat education. We just have to be strategic in terms of um, our education and the skills that we pick up. So I agree with you, Kamari. All right, Lawrence, what, what do you think? I'm coming to yeah. you next list. I'm sorry. The first thing I'll say is that over the last, what, 10 years or so, our lifestyle kind of completely increased. So you, you're when you think about this inflation that's going on, we kind of have to make these adjustments at, at the personal level, at the lifestyle um, segment. I was actually looking. I think I even have it on my IG when I did the research on like what increased the last what three years. Um, 
based on the consumer um, finances, turns out like people are paying a lot of money on eating out. People are paying a lot of money on um, uh, fees and, and admin stuff for, for entertainment. And there's a lot of people even I, it's, instead of going to get gr their groceries, they actually just order it in. So there's a lot of unnecessary costs that we added on ourselves. And in these moments, you could kind of cut back slow down like it's not just the the income sometimes it's just making an adjustment and cutting mm -hmm. back on the unnecessary stuff that we added on tacked on for the last couple of years like so you mean good. i shouldn't get this new streaming platform i was thinking about oh yeah like i had a friend that she had like like five or six of them and she barely even watched one i'm like what I is saw. the point of having all of this like you have what? to kind of consider that idea that maybe it's not important and you cut the little bit where you can all right, Lawrence, next time at me, man. So shop at Instagram. <laughs> shop at Instagram. Yo, <laughs> speaking of. Oh, wait a minute, Jimmy. Like, Look, hey, it's supposed to be like a trillion dollar industry out of nowhere. Well, like, did you see Instacart just went public, right? Yeah, but hold on, Jimmy. <laughs> I want to get, I want, hold on, Jimmy. I want to get Liz's take on this. Go ahead, Liz. Uh, honestly, I don't think there's much to said that I don't agree with. It, our spending has gone up exponentially. And again, from the lending world, I see it all. I see the credit card debt that's gone up. I've seen the uh, increase in expenses on uh, things that are automatically done. I'm, I'm watching people's bank statements. I see the Instacarts, the Amazons, the DoorDash, the Grubhub, the uh, the Target um, orders. And I'm I'm guilty of the Target orders myself because if I don't want to go in there, I'm not going. No, um, <laughs> Listen, it, it, you know, and, and part of this is within context. We just got out of a pandemic. So everybody had to stay their behinds in the house, you know, in order to and still have to take care of themselves. So it's just we have to be able to increase skills. We have to be able to decrease spending. But also, I think people need to also get back into picking up trades. I'm going to stick with that. Education is great, but I really do need a good plumber and electrician. And a good contractor who knows what they're doing. I need those good things. I And you don't necessarily have to spend a whole bunch of money on education to get a nice, profitable job uh, 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 that keeps you within reasonable earning capacity, you know, to, and to be able to save. I think we under, I think we over, um, over value degrees sometimes and undervalue just people who pick up trades and do very exceptionally well at them to build and scale business to do it that way. You'd be surprised. I, that's just my thought. Um, because other than that, everybody need to get a job in IT. Because at this point, <laughs> hey, listen. no, come on. The point I, I, was making. I got those numbers, man. And this is kind of crazy. I want to just jump in with that. The numbers is like because it's wild. Travel lodging is up 163%. Fees and admissions are up 96%. Eating out is up 53%. Apparel, nearly 40%. Alcohol, 22%. Reading, it's like 2.63%. Like, yeah, at reading is just never really going up. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. I, but at the end of the day, that's, these numbers are crazy. It shows us, I don't look at these things and like and, and judge the data for what it is. I'm like, this is our priorities. This is where the, our money is going. And I think that's- Your pocketbook really shows where your priorities are. Mm -hmm. But um, I, listen, I, I'm just going, I'm not going to blame Beyonce because I love Beyonce. I ain't blaming her. I'm, I'm like, she's making her money. She's making that generational wealth. Wait, wait, wait. Listen, she is. Um, but also at the same time, again, pick up pick up some trades or you know, get an IT certification, get Google certs. They were giving that away for free. I think it's still free. Yeah, I think it's still now Jimmy, what were you about to say? No, I was just gonna say, like, in terms of Instacart became such a profitable business that they just went public and their uh chairman and CEO after they went public became worth 1.3 billion mm -hmm. and then and then and then stepped down, said he was done with the company. So <laughs> He got his payday and bounced. <laughs> now watch, watch, watch after after the uh, restriction period is up. He's going to sell a boatload of Instacart stuff. Yeah, he already sold. They said like twenty one million. That's all he was. <laughs> that's all he was able to sell at the time. So he, he locked in just, just twenty. 20 yeah, just locked yeah, in. Yeah, he locked that in already. And then as time goes on, you know, but he, he well, said listen, my the, job here. The mandates are coming, y'all. So just wait. He said my job here is done. You know, I, I just feel like um. You know, to the point you were making earlier about um, seeing those folks that have the money and they're they're showing what they're spending their things on. I think that is getting back to our conversation. That is why the mental health part is important because a lot of people, like a lot of our issues when it comes to spending, goes to self esteem, right? And what does that come from? That comes from something, right? So this is this is why I think that we can't just ignore the mental health piece because why are we spending like this? Why are, why are we conditioned? So Kamari brought up the scammers, right? How many scammers are online running the play, the quote unquote run the play culture? Why are our people so, um, why are they so willing to go along with that? 
fear of missing out, trying to fit in social right. capital. Well, we yeah, we I, put I, a I, lot of value into social capital as a black community. So, and it's value. also it's also a low level of financial education as well. It's well, we just get, we, we like the way it looks. Yeah. Well, we got to get to the root of that. And unless we solve that, we're going to be on this this treadmill. Well, I'll, I'll say to your point is is black love. That's what that's exactly what that is because it's literally black hate to go buy a car just to post up and, and, and to show out in front of your friends. It's like or in front of the you community. You want to show other poor people. It's, 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 it's literally it's just like I'm gonna buy this car because I know it's gonna elicit a reaction and it's gonna put me on a higher tier than others. That's why these people are doing that because in the, in the fact I think I wrote it recently and I I, did, I I summed it down as black a lot of people not just black people but a lot of people are trying to buy love. Either buy love a, a financial one, just the approval, social approval, or actually physically buy love for the, the opposite sex. But ultimately, it's to really kind of go back to the point where they don't even have their own self love. They don't love themselves. This is like, like I don't feel the need to go buy. Like most of the people that see me in this shirt all the time, because I don't feel the need to go buy something else but to I, do exactly I, what to do exactly the what thing, the funny thing to is make I, you I'm, feel like. What exactly? That, that's where it's saying, right? So I, I'm on the same wavelength, right? I, I don't put value in certain things. And I was actually talking to Kamari recently, and I was telling him one of the things that helped me the most financially isn't business books. It's studying um, sto uh, stoic behaviors or minimalism. And mm -hmm. studying those philosophies, it actually helped me financially. Because what it does is it makes me think about things that actually add value to my life and to focus on things that add value to my life. Um but that's why I think that the mental health conversation just can't be ignored because the people that have income and they're spending it, fr they're spending it frivolously, they're doing it for a reason. We have to solve that. Until we figure out why or how to work on that, we're just going to be constantly doing the same thing. You're always going to have, you know, the outliers that make, you know, millions or, or billions, even billions these days. Right. Mm -hmm. But if none of that ever gets to the people, what are we doing? So I'm I'm just gonna say in that regard because I've I've talked with a lot of different people about this from different spaces and I've talked to people from different countries as well, and one of the most amazing things that I've heard is like someone was uh they're they're immigrant they're like we overcomplicate our life with things and yes. American culture yes. is built around consuming things yes. it none none of it is about enjoying the world or nature none of it is about you know even though we've moved into tiny homes somehow that's even turned into an issue as a well right everything is um, but we we operate in a culture that does not allow you to find self-love and self-worth and find that to be enough it is everything has to be transactional to be valuable everything has to bring profit to be valuable and that's why you have so many people struggling with who they are and trying to take on all these different um personalities case in point tiktok is a great thing to an extent in one way and another detriment in another you got people acting mm -hmm. like video game uh mp what is it npc npcs yeah right <sighs> for money characters. for money and don't, get, and don't get me wrong i was mad i, I was mean, mad it, it that was i could goofy. be out here sounding like uh chung lee talking about some ice cream yum and i could get ten thousand dollars in an hour <laughs> I'm living. <laughs> well, let me let me ask the panel a question, and for everybody that's listening in the chat as well, y'all just brought up something I thought that was really good. My question is, what would happen if the black community in America totally divorced itself from American consumerism culture? What do y'all think would happen? We'd um, be happy for it. Yeah, um, I, I think so. So I just recently read a book called "Don't Trust Your." Well, I didn't. You said what? He said he'd be, he'd be happy for it. And I agree with him. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. But it's not going to happen. But what I was saying, Kamari, to that point, I just read a book. It's called Don't Trust Your Gut. And it's about using data science to make decisions. And one of the things from the book, it talks about when they do studies and ask people about the things that make them happy. Most of the answers have nothing to do with money. But all of our habits in terms of where we put our money have nothing to do with putting money to the things that makes us happy. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a disconnect there which goes to Liz's point about consumerism. But then when you look at it, 24-7, 365, we are being sold to. So we're fighting an uphill battle because we're being constantly marketed to about not only things that we quote unquote need in our life, but even what wealth looks like, right? And there's nothing wrong with buying you know, sports cars or fancy clothes if that adds value to your life, right? So I'm not saying that people who have money don't buy those things. Um, it's just that, 
we have to focus on what actually brings joy to our life. And a lot of times we'll find it's not those things. Um, but that's why that book was so interesting because they've actually done the research and they cite the studies and, and I pulled the studies up and read them. And I'm like, wow, things like, you know, nature or walks in the park or being by bodies of water, all those things that really don't even cost that much money are what truly bring people, um, you know, happiness. But we spend our time chasing things that don't bring us happiness, but we feel like we have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a fact. I mean, you brought up a, a good point, a great point. I know in 1973-ish, um, somebody, of course, uh, fact-checked me on this, but there were approximately 500 ads or brand impressions a person would see or experience daily. Now, and my numbers are probably a little bit off as they're out of date, there are at least 5,000 brand impressions a person sees a day. Yeah. So what does that do? I mean, to your point, Jimmy. What does that do? I mean, Mark, Martin Lindstrom wrote a book on that too. It's called Brandwashed. And if you read Brandwashed, mm. you'll see how uh, that's part of American culture. We buy into brands and we put these mm-hmm. values on brands um, that control our behavior. But it all goes back to Liz's point about, about capitalism and consumerism. Mm-hmm. So, but that but that was my only point about we have to really get to the core of what some of these problems are. I don't disagree with anything that Lawrence said. There are. But wait a minute, Jimmy. I want to get Liz Liz's response to my question because she said it couldn't happen. Why do you feel it couldn't happen? Because a large majority of what drives our culture in this country, about 99% of it, is what Black people do. So if you remove the people who set the the pulse, the interests, um, who make everything cool from the picture, you now have a full collapse of capitalism and consumerism. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, what if Black people said, no, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to play this game You You will have a full collapse. Well, that exists in my opinion. I think the system will always find something else. Like um, there will always be somebody else to pick up the slack on that system. So well, if there if is a group phone, that that wants to do it, they'll always find it. So because well, you're you're going to find black folks get paid by the system to kind of be the to stay quote unquote puppet, right? Right. Some will say that's already happening, right? In terms of what what's put out put out there in front of us, but we do control cool. We do control culture. Problem is we don't own cool and we don't own cool. Right. So the the question isn't about owning it. The question is what happens if we completely divest from it. And while I feel like um, you get the, I feel like the point is yes, there'll always be someone to do it. If you if you look at the trends and how things are going when it comes to social media, what's happening in those trends and what's what's viral, what's not, who set who's the start of that? It's us. So the minute you remove, like we literally are black gold. If you remove us out of it, right? If you remove us from the entire system, because we like, you know what? We're done. We're going to go ahead and go communicate with our ancestors and meditate and align our chakras. Somebody is going to have a full connection um, because the reality is we, we are the black gold and to take it further, we are the, we are the black oil. And if we want to take it further net, we are literally the walking cotton that they pick to make money off of us on this global plantation. So if you take us out of it, take us out of it, you no longer have a system to base. Well, what's the next move? What's the next tier? How do we keep other people's interests? You don't because we're no longer involved. That's yeah. why I said it's not going to happen. I think I'm not interested in that. I don't care what happens to plants it. I think at the end of the day, I'd rather see a world in which we kind of move away from overconsumption mm-hmm. and over capitalism. So I don't think you can always completely remove anybody from this system. The system of America is capitalistic. The system of society of the globe is is generally just it it functions on money and resources and services yeah but the over consumptions Mm -hmm. i think that's the problem that we're at and we have to kind of slow down on it to actually maybe yeah if you want to communicate with the ancestors do so but if you just want to communicate with your significant other then that becomes more important we have to shift our priorities and i think that matters more to me than the collapse of what's cool at least it's never been important to me i guess i was always too poor to qualify for all these cool stuff. So I, I learned along the way that I didn't care to fit in because if I did, I would kind of completely went so nuts. I, I'm with you, but from a business standpoint, I know also if I want to get my message out there without becoming salacious or um, being a person who wants to constantly agitate, I got to tap what actually is cool. So it works It works in a great way. But I agree with you, Lawrence, on we do overconsume because again, capitalism isn't about, well, let's do things within reason. It's how much money can I make? Fully and completely off a situation. I think we all agree. Yeah, we do overconsume, but I guess the question I'm asking is, why at a high, why at the rate that we do, why are we overconsuming the way we are? Like, what, what is it? And I, I, you already, I know you already answered this, Lawrence. 
what is it that we're chasing or what is it that we're trying to um you know fulfill wholeness over consumption love love Fulfillment. which is actually very love. interesting because yeah. the entire conversation went full circle from yeah. the very beginning with mm -hmm. the idea of love or self love and if you don't if you don't love yourself it doesn't matter and i think a lot of people don't love themselves and they get into these caustic conversations online social media with gender wars whatever it is mm -hmm. red pill blue pill purple pill it doesn't really matter and it's been yeah. going on way before social media because it's, it's been in the, the, the barbershops, it's been in the salons, it's been in the back room, in the local market. It's always been with us because we typically just don't love ourselves and we don't spend enough time with ourselves to get to know that, hey, we are enough. And to your mm -hmm. point, maybe it's, I don't personally think it's just this, this, the commodified version of therapy as much more self-communing and having conversation with yourself and your significant other that's going to really change who you are mentally. And even with your friends, instead of going to brunch, physically going to brunch, just decide to stay at home with your friends. It might be a better time. You might even learn to cook from each other. You yeah, might even bring in a couple of alcohol together and actually have and save some money. He, 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 he I, I, like, I have different fire pit kickbacks. I love huh? a good fire pit kickback. Oh, no, yes, like, you know like, what you know mean? You know mean? But there's a lot of people that have bought into the system of let's go. There's the other place where we can't even listen to each other because the music's super loud. You got to create content. What are you talking about? Like, we don't have to. <laughs> they're, having, <laughs> they're, having create, they're, they're having bottle wars. They're having bottle wars and VIPs. And I, my friend said to me, oh, and yeah, I was I like, that. Are you throwing away thousands? Well, hold on. I got. We got to talk about bottle wars. I'm not talking about them. <laughs> Lawrence. Though I want to comment on what Lawrence just said about yeah. about just kicking it with friends. That was a part of that book I was talking about. Like, mm -hmm. don't trust your gut. When they asked people about what brought joy, a lot of them said just kicking in their house with their friends. Right. One of the things that makes them the happiest. Right. But somehow we found a way to spend spend money doing that. We don't even want to do that. We'd rather go to brunch and do things like that. So I mean. I think people are still looking for it, though. When they go to brunch, they're looking for it. I think it, it hit me maybe, what, four years ago. I went to like a, it was like a FSU thing. And I'm sitting there across the person that I've, I've always kind of saw it at college, right? Me and my wife are there. She and her husband and other people. And at the end of that conversation, I, I heard nothing because the music was so blaring. I have no idea who she is, what she's going through. Maybe I could have helped her. Maybe we could have been resourceful for each other. Kind of like do like the financial stuff. Who knows? But I'll never know because, hey, in these environments, it became more about the, the spectacle and less about the person. Did and you I get think that's content, what we need though? to get. Huh? Did you get some content? Oh, I didn't get no content. I was <laughs> like, man, I don't need to be here. Like, I just really felt some. I'm like, this is wrong. There's something wrong about a space where you could go in and actually never connect with the person mm -hmm. at all. You never actually know them because you walked away like, well, I had a somebody was like, I had a good time. Did you have a good time? Are you just saying you had a good time because that's what's expected of you? When the bottom pictures came out, come on, what you want to talk about? It, it is, right, but it hold is. Hold bottle so I did. Here. I wanted to talk about bottle wars. Cake Diggy said, "Talk about bottle wars, right?" So I know it looks ratchet, and it, it is, is ratchet, right? It is ratchet. I can't Ooh. defend it, but I've talked to some people in Houston, and I assume that this was a white establishment. It's a black establishment, and I've been. I've confirmed that from seven Houstonians, and they said this is actually a thing that this happens a lot, and it's a black establishment. So while it may be ratchet, at least they're supporting black-owned businesses. That's all I got. This happens a lot. You I thought really, it was like you really made that argument. I, I love how like, that, that was yo, like, that this was happens awesome. a lot. No, like it, it, it does. I thought it, it was like a one-off. Like you literally tell no. me this is this is an ongoing feud. There are there are uh, at least they're not really... killing each other. I guess. Like, I, the, like, I, I mean, if, if this is if this is the alternative to 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 shooting, that's fine. But I don't know because once you leave, who's going to say you're not the getting club. busy? Let's in the, do it. In the parking lot. at the club. <laughs> like, um, I see you but, at the club. But I will say the to your point, Lawrence. Before we talked about these crazy little bottle wars where people are wasting investment money and trip money, I just leave it alone. Um, it is it is about it is, it is <laughs> <laughs> that too. It is it is about like a connection. Like we aren't really connected to ourselves. We're not connected to the people around us, and so we we have like the the greatest joy and issue of social media is that we have connections, but they're not really thorough connections. I can know something about someone's life fully and completely and never have a conversation with them. So when I actually do see them in real life, I don't have anything to really talk about because I've, I've gone through your reel. I've gone through your page. I saw that you just had a baby. I saw what you named the baby. I saw that the baby is now three weeks old. I saw that you got married. I saw that you got engaged. Like going to high school and college reunions, I'm like, well, what the hell are we going to talk about? 
Because yeah. I saw it. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> I, I want to read this comment from GC. He says, so a few black folks pouring out liquor is not a wealth changing situation. Agreed. Let them flex. Let them flex. It is what it is. I mean, I don't guess. It, it ain't. Listen, let's let's, 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 not, let's like, not normalize foolishness, guys. But not, you know what? But you we know, always no, think it I'm is not, what it is, and that's that's I'm, how we get not, a whole other it's generation. Not norm, of but it's not, you know what? It's not normalizing foolishness, right? I'm just going to say that there's certain things, like, first of all, don't nobody give a shit about what we say. That's number one. Number two, people want to do what they want to do. Like, I'm watching this whole conversation about sexy red and how she's the destruction of a black woman. And I'm like, not even close. she's not, not even number close. one, right? This has happened before with Trina and Kim and Foxy, whatever. And it's not even, it's not a defense. It's more of an observation, right? People forget Cardi was just as ratchet before what, she got money. Wait a minute. It, but here's the thing now. If all of us, you know, so-called woke people keep talking about all the ratchet shit, that's what keeps it popular. And I don't think many people are getting it. Can I vote for, can I vote for balance, though? Can I'm sorry. Just no, 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 no. Listen, <laughs> listen. If you hang with us enough, uh, Liz, you'll know me and Jimmy. We love our ratchet TV. Oh yeah, okay. we just keep right. it amongst the uh, the group chat. Yeah. Like, we, yeah, I'm, we, I'm we just saying, share. I'm gonna share more. Like, I'm gonna take right over for the nine on the two thousands anytime that I can. Yeah, it's nine 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 okay. this thing up all you want, Liz. I ain't got no problem with that. I ain't judging you. I'm just saying that the more energy you give a thing, right. the more it grows. So if we only want to give energy to these negative things all the time, what about some of the positive things? There's a lot of positive shit going on right now. Shakari, um, Coco. Come on, like, there's a lot of there's a lot of positive stuff going on right now, but I mean, somehow, I, I, sexy red is dominating. Well, that's all I got. Remember, remember Bill Cosby? Um, I know it's like uh, you can't use his name no more, but I, at one point he had bought this network and tried to have a network that showed nothing but positive movies, had positive news and positive stories. Well, he like, tried that and it didn't work. Nothing, nobody watched <laughs> because. <laughs> You know, um, the salacious things is is what draws eyes. And at the end of the day, it, it's, it's that's what it's about. My answer to this is some people need to get offline and put their phone down because a lot of this stuff that's happening with these debates and arguments, they don't happen offline. Yeah. And so I guess, so if we never, so here's, here's something I'm truly contemplating. Me and Jimmy have been contemplating this, right? So we talk about this stuff a lot. And sometimes it's repetitive. At what point is it the point? I'm not going to do salacious titty ass jumping type stuff so what's the point of being here then now let's just gotta, let's just gotta, go outside let's go to the park I, I, I get what you're saying but I, I, you know we you know my clean glass theory right there's a there's a lot of people out there putting bad information um who mean harm to the folks because all they care about is themselves so Jimmy, do, do me a favor tell everybody with the clean so we have a clean glass gang yeah. Lawrence is a part of it. Y'all just don't know it yet. Liz is a part of it. Y'all just y'all know it now. Mm -hmm. But tell okay. everybody what the clean glass gang is, Jimmy. So there are a lot of folks out there showing people the dirty glass, right? In terms of the scammers and you know, um, showing people the wrong way to to to, to handle things within the finance space. And you got to kind of combat that by not getting upset, not doing what they do, because what you'll find a lot of times is people start to have the conversation that Kamari just started. Like, man, I can't get any traction. So let me go to do something salacious or something that's not even within who I am to get attention. And the, the, the debate that me and Kamari all the time is, look, just continuously show people the clean glass. Because what happens is eventually they come to you anyway, because they realize that all the other stuff is BS and they need to, they, they want to get the information. But, you know, sometimes they just start off going down the wrong path. So we got to be the clean glass in terms of putting out good information, which is why we say Lawrence is a part of it. Liz is a part of it because these are people that we know, um, you know, have, people's best interest at heart even if we don't agree 100 percent all the time as long as we're trying to move our people forward i think that's what matters most yeah so when y'all see us talk about clean glass you know what we're talking about so before we end this because we've been on over two hours and i know we got to go to go to work i ain't got my vittles yet y'all know the deal gotta get my vittles what's the answer if you get in 30 seconds or less how would you sum it up Start with you, Jimmy. I'm simple. You can move on. My answer is black love. Um, focus on, and, and Lawrence brought up a great point. Start by loving yourself. Really figure out what makes you happy. Figure out, uh, understand that you are enough, that you do have value. 
Um, we're all geniuses in one way or another. You got to figure out how to unlock your genius, but start with loving yourself and then love your people. Um, it was a great quote in the comments. I don't know if you put it up on the screen um, or not, which was a nearly fuller quote. But, um, you know, so do some reading, love yourself and love your people. That I saw that Nelly full of quote, but Liz, what what do you have to that? Oh man, 30 seconds to summarize. You know, the pressure. 40, 45, 45. 45 seconds. Honestly, listen to understand and check your ego. Ooh, ooh. Ego, ego is the enemy. Ego is the enemy. Another great book. That's that's really all I got. Um, we get in our way a lot. Say that say that one more time for us, Liz. Listen to understand and check your ego. Dang. Mm. All right, Lawrence, what you got, brother? We need that book list. Stop playing. Uh, the pressure is on, so I'll say move with faith, uh, true faith, not just the uh, faith during the good time, but faith, especially through times of challenges. Move with intention and move with purpose. I think a lot of us are mo- missing purpose in our lives, and we're trying to find it anything else by bottle wars and so on and so forth. But in <laughs> the day, find purpose, true purpose in what you do about every day. So I think that's going to change our community, no matter what it is. No nah, man, that was fine. That was fine. That, that was why. Another great book. Absolutely. All right, gentlemen. We are going to do our, our whole separate podcast just for all these books and movies and ratchetness that we so love solve. All right, let's get so, it. All right, <laughs> all right. So Alyssa, everybody, I appreciate you all being here tonight. This is the Finance Rebel Show. We are here at least on Wednesdays once a week. I'll probably do a couple other things because I got a couple other articles I want to go over. And I'm trying to get Jimmy. And Lawrence and Lawrence back on Sunday, but we'll see how that answers. So be sure to subscribe to the Finance Rebel YouTube channel. Click the little bell button so you can get the notifications, and it will be back really, really soon. I appreciate you all, and I'll see you next time. I'm